Go live. Going live. You're live. Hell. That's the phone. That's fine. It's around the corner. It's on the thing. Literally, you hit go live and the phone rang. And it's like, can you not? I'm doing a thing. I am. Mom. <laughs> also, over there, that's where the camera is now. I just immediately, I went, hello, interwebs. And it's just like, over that, there. That's a light. It is. Well, no, that's, there's, the, the webcam is there as well. Oh, okay. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Two Guys Talk Tech. Welcome to the show. I'm going to go to full screen, actually. I'm going to do that. That. There we go. Hello, everyone. Um, welcome in. Welcome in. How are we all Good doing afternoon. today? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Yes, that's what I'm looking for. Uh, right. Chat. I want to make that chat a little bit bigger so I can read it better. There we go. Carrados working on his own chat. He's just complaining about his laptop first. Absolutely. Is it only 1080p? It is actually true 1080p, though. That's yeah. quite impressive. Do you guys have audio? Yes, you, you guys can you, you hear did, us. You yes. did turn on the microphone. Yes. Congratulations. The, the microphone well was all the way at the bottom of the audio mixer stack, and I had to scroll down to see it. So for a minute, I was just like, wait, can they actually hear us? So. But see, more of the problem, more of the problem is the fact that the, the, the smart unlocking didn't smart unlock. Oh. So now I have to type in my password. On your phone, or are you just looking like, up like the password? Some, like some sort of peasant. Yeah, now I'm looking <laughs> up the password. Oh. Right. But yes, Carol Trump, yes, he's on He's on the small chair because all of the stools in this shop are broken again, and they all squeak incessantly um, because stools don't last, man. It sucks. But yes, hello, everyone. How's it going? Uh, Null, Yell, Yate Computing, hello, hello. And Bacon Bro, I remember that name as well. Postal, hello. Uh, let's see. Greetings from Egypt. Hello, hello. Right, glad the show is back. Yes, I was away last week. I was out seeing family. Um, Ashley had a nice day, so it was a case of cancelled things, but uh, I had a nice day, so it's fine. Probably not the last time either, because I'm going on holiday at the start of August, so there'll probably be another missed show. Maybe, anyway. Um, I'm kind of thinking of doing some streams from holiday, because... Um, my family, uh, I'm going on a holiday with my family and we're going to like a cottage in the middle of nowhere. Like, bi like it's more like a lodge, if anything. Big place, they've got a gaming room, a TV room, a living room and all the rest of it. And a as, house. I guess, yeah. But it's got no upstairs. But and, and A bungalow. <laughs> bungalow imp implies that it's just a small place for old people to live or something. No offence, people who live in bungalows. but Which is most of Australia, I think. I mean, as they say, it's all right for Australia. Yeah, <laughs> good enough for Australia. Um, but yeah, and I, I was thinking of doing a remote there because I was saying to my family, uh, yeah, you got... Because my family were just like, we're going on holiday, come on holiday. And I'm like, that's very complicated. Going on holiday is very complicated for me. That's There's a reason why I never go on holiday. Um, and they were just like... It has oh, nothing to do with me not having a passport. Yeah, <laughs> but they were like, oh, you could do your streams from there. They've got good fiber broadband and stuff like that. And I'm like... Maybe I will. So yeah, we might do a remote stream there. Um, so yes, I'll, there are glasses there. Yeah, so I'll, I'll see how things go. I'm, I'm probably gonna. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I think I'm gonna make no promises, but I'll probably bring the kit to do it, and then I'll see how I feel as things advance. And then you know, if um, um, if everything is chill and the broadband is actually good, I'll be like, yes, cool, okay, I'm gonna do a stream from here. Whereas if the broadband is a bit squicky, like they say, it's fiber. But if it's one of those cases where it's fiber broadband, but it's actually 30 down and two up or something like that, <laughs> because it's fiber to the cabinet and the cabinet is about 20 miles away, mm. I'm going to be like, yeah, I'm not going to try and stream off of this. Or like if I end up like if tethered Internet is my only option, I'm not streaming on that. I've tried to do it before. It didn't go very well. So, yes, this one time at LAN, uh, to LAN party. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it did work. I, I it, it worked just about, but it wasn't a great experience. And afterwards, I was like, okay, "I'm never doing this again." Yeah, I was like, "I that works, but I'm not doing it again." But yes, absolutely. <laughs> Mr. Guru says here in Australia, it's just a house. So yeah, it's true. Um, oh, have you not quite made it at home yet, <laughs> or something? No, just the fact of if if it's a single story house in the UK, it's called a bungalow. Yeah, but we did, yes, because we have many forms of housing. Yeah. It gets terrible. Yes. There's this new form of housing I've been informed of called cloister housing. 
I'm not familiar with that one. It's where you have four ho- houses together in a cluster, but it's called Cloister. Oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Fine. That was a new one that was brought up on me recently. And then duplex flats, maisonettes, townhouses, midtown yeah. house. Duplex flats are so confusing. I've like I've had I've got friends who've lived in duplex flats, and like you show up, you go into their flat, and you're like, "But there's a stairway. I don't understand. It's a flat, you know. It's not very flat. Yes, precisely. <laughs> like like it's in the name, you know. Oh well. <laughs> and you've got cottages. How are cottages different to bungalows or houses? Yeah. Oh, fun, upside down houses. Fun has, yeah. Fun house says, "Do you guys remember Laurel and Hardy?" I do remember Laurel and Hardy, and yes, you're not the first person to make that comparison, and I'll take it as a compliment. So yeah. Um, let's see. What's that ODD looking CD album thing behind you? Oh. <laughs> I was, I was looking in the OBS preview so I could see the background. I'm like, what's he talking about? And then I saw it. Why do I even have that CD here still? Is it still shrink wrapped or did I open it? No, I'm not talking about it. We're, we're not. No. Anyway. Anyway, let's uh, let's talk about some tech. Do I have a bigger check? No. This is this is as good as it gets. I mean, I can accentuate the problem by putting my stool up to its highest level. So yeah, what I really like is to have a gas strut stool that's powerful enough to actually lift me up, so I can recreate a scene from Nevermind the Buzzcocks, where the uh, the presenter dude had they 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 did a thing on an episode where he had a power gas strut in his chair, and just at random he could push an up button and just start ascending on the set. And he did it once where he went up by like five feet and then just went, I am the one and only. And it was very funny. They can't take that away from me. Hands up if anyone's seen that reference. Anyway, Simon Am still, that's the one. Yeah, Woody, Woody Black's got me. Okay. Camera is a bit bright. You guys look ghostly. Um, it is a little bit. I'm ghostly anyway. We are a little bit washed out, but... I like how you say that, and legitimately, you're a yellower shade of white I'm just am. yellow in general. I think my liver is failing. Do, do, do you have strange patches of brown appearing upon your person? No. Okay, you don't have liver spots, so okay. you're okay. But yes. Caradox cup pick is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it is mandatory to use that mug. Shout out to uh, um, to Sai and um, uh, Mike Fusion. Wasn't Postal involved in that as well? Call them all out. Well, They're yeah, all terrible. Yeah, Sai, Sai, Postal, and Night Fusion were all involved in that. <laughs> Too much Devon juice. Oh no! Right. Uh, did we mod the keyboard yet? We haven't done the keyboard yet. However, the um, uh, we'll actually start doing stuff and talking about stuff in a minute, guys. Maybe it's just, eventually. Yeah. Yeah, if if you came here it's for a slow. If, yeah, if you came here for a for a, a structured show, you're in the wrong channel. That's my excuse. Anyway, these uh, these boys did show up today. I can do this now. So check this out. Uh, let's go to the bench cam and actually focus as well. So here are the um, here are the things we ordered. So there's the USB Type C connectors, um, the ports, ports, the plug in bits. Yes. Uh, and the doodads, the doohickeys. Yeah, the and jiggles. I'll just grab a cable because um, when when it showed up and Caradoc made the same mistake, we were just like, oh no, they were right. We ordered the wrong ones because there were so many comments of people going, oh, I ordered uh, the wrong no, ones. I didn't think we'd ordered the wrong ones. Mm. I thought they'd made them the wrong size. Oh, you, yeah. I thought like they had, it was manufacturing defects. They were the wrong size. Yeah. Because they looked exactly the same size as the cable. Yeah. And like the, the 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 connector on that plug there is a fairly thick boy. However, they they do actually plug in, and they plug in with a very satisfying click as well. So that's kind of rad. Absolutely. So yes, so we can now start USB C modding things. So we're going to do Caradog's keyboard. We're not going to do that today, just because where I was off last week and it's been a stressful week. I'm very much in a mindset of I can't be asked this week. So I was just like, I've got a couple of, um, I've got a couple of soldering kits and we're just going to do some soldering kits because I want something simple this week. Um, 
So yeah, however, the keyboard will be on its way soon. And speaking of keyboards as well, and also just because I, Teltac is around in the chat, also coming up probably as a dedicated video, uh, Teltac is building some ridiculous Mad Lab keyboard. Um, and he has sent me these low profile uh, Kalia, is that how you pronounce it? Kayla? Kyle? Kyle? Kalia? Kyle? Those. Kale? Kale. Yes. Kale. Yes. Some kale brown low profile switches. And these are really kind of interesting, I thought. So I wanted to show these as well. Kale is in rail. Yeah, there we go. So these I are. I do not wish to rail your switches. <laughs> so these are low profile. Um, mechanical keyboard switches and they're really cool they're very nice and like compared this is a Cherry MX Red here so there's a Cherry MX Red and there's the Kale so as you can see super low profile mechanical and because it's see-through you can see the action really well so let me show you a really big close-up of this because it's cool all right let me get super deep in on that and focus zoom enhance engage focus. NCIS there we go. And so now, if I grab a poker so I can poke, if you look, you can see the action there. How cool is that? Interesting. And like, as soon as, soon as I feel the tactile bump, you can see that little lever just snapping onto the contact there. It's, you can't move it slowly. Like, if I depress really slowly, it moves really quickly. So yeah, and like, the bottom of the travel does nothing, as you can see. So as soon as it hits the bump, there's the, the action point. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. I looked at the wrong camera again. I thought that was kind of cool. Yes. Now x-ray, yeah. <laughs> Hello, Sri Lanka. So yes, low profile are unusual kind of year. So uh, so yes, that's that. Uh, HMIT. They're also very flat keycaps, aren't they? Uh, yeah. If you wanna, yeah, if you break out one of the keycaps, Yeah, I thought this was kind of interesting because I've all I like low profile keyboards as well because I'm I'm very accustomed to laptop keyboards. Um so there's one of the keycaps which again is super low. So if I just stick one of those on. So you end up with the the entire thing is uh, uh bench cam. The entire thing is that height. Yeah. So yeah, I thought that was kind of cool, and yeah, it's, if you side by side there, yeah, and so yeah, there's the side by side. So the entire the entire mechanism is going to be like half the height of a full height one. So yeah, I've always fancied low profile keyboards. So this is sort of giving me ideas. But I was Caradog and I were talking before the show um, about keyboard stuff because. Both of us have a bit of an interest in doing some custom keyboard stuff, but man, it's just everything's really expensive um, for what you're getting, and the standards are a bit of a mess. And yeah, like I'm really interested in building this, and I'm really interested in building this for Teltac. However, I think he's a bit of a mad lad, and I think he's going to build a mad lad keyboard that no one would want to use. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> So yeah, low profile keys. <laughs> yeah, Caradog is also in low profile mode at the moment. <laughs> yes. Gergoplex is it? Gergoplex. Gergoplex. Giorgo. Giorgo. It's George. Plex. Giorgo. Giorgoplex. I'm guessing. Yeah. Or Giorgio. I don't know. As in like Armani. <laughs> or Armada. Depends it's... on whether you're a fashion person or a EDM person. <laughs> go, 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 Plex. Go, uh, go. <laughs> go, uh, go, Plex. Okay. So now he's just got to get some OLED keycaps so he can have some GIFs on his go, go, Plex as well. There's, a, there's some GIF jokes in there somewhere. Anyway. Uh, those, um, uh, yes, that was legitimately a keyboard that had the OLED keycaps. Yeah, caps. yeah. The really crappy first gen OLED keycaps yep. that burned in after about seven hours. Yeah. And the keyboard cost something like a thousand pounds. Yeah. And I, I was think like, it's ah, a... that's kind of cool. And then they used shitty membrane 
laptop switches on it and i was like ha ah. it was ahead um, of its time unfortunately i'd like to see someone take another swing at that because every now and then i see someone linked to a prototype keyboard that has oled keycaps on it and it's and everyone swoons over it and goes wow look at that and i'm just like yeah these things have been around for ages but just no one has successfully brought one to production at any kind of sane price with a good quality with with, with something that you can actually use as a daily kind of thing. So, yeah. Do you remember seeing the things for the mobile phone screens with, like, the air pockets in? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, they, they had these, they had a, uh, they had a working prototype oh. for a, a, a touch screen, tablet screen, that could raise little bumps on it so you could actually have tactile feedback on keys and rough surfaces. And I went, huh. You're going to look at that once and go, why does my screen look all weird? Why is there this weird banding? Oh, why is this image distorted down here? Well, you'd only use it like when the keyboard is on screen and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but the fact that the plastic would either have to stretch, so mm. deform, or would have to be slack and have wrinkles in it, would mean there's an air gap between the edge of the display and the actual thing that creates the image. Ooh, good point. So it's going to look yeah. iffy. Yeah. So this is like, oh. Mm -hmm. Yes, but no. Or like the lasers that like projected the keyboard onto the desk and you went. I've never, I want to try one of those. I think they're terrible because they you've got no feedback. Yeah. They are. But they're, they're also an interesting idea that I would like to try. I would like to try one of those just to see if they're any good. Yeah. So yeah. Um, opinions on the Steam Deck. Oh yes, thanks for reminding me, Dale. I do have opinions on the Steam Deck, and I want to. I have opinions. I do have opinions, and so I've got my own podcast. So everyone has to listen to my opinions now. <laughs> After all, that's literally the only reason to start a podcast is because you have opinions and you want to state them as facts. Hi, welcome to Two Guys Talk Tech. <laughs> so, hi, hi, Two Guys Talk Modern Social Media. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, the Steam Deck. Nord VPN. <laughs> Oof. <laughs> but first, a, me a, a message from our sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends. No, not really. Um, um, right, anyway. Um, <laughs> Stream Deck. Steam Deck. Steam Deck. Steam Deck. Not to, not oh! to be confused with the Stream Deck. Oh! Have you just made that connection? I thought, every time I read it, I thought people were talking about stream decks and i was so confused i was like yeah. they're old they're very old yeah no nope. there's nothing new about them i even went on the corsair website and was like nope there isn't a new one i'm very confused yeah nope well i saw it by chance because um oh, um i uh i was um i i just opened steam to download a game that i was going to stream on thursday which it, it was thursday that it was announced wasn't it Yes, yeah. because opened, we talked about yeah. it in your stream. That's right. Yeah, because I opened I opened Steam on Thursday purely by chance, and it was just front page, and I was just like, "Oh, cool! They made one of those." So, I mean, obviously, these call it what it is. It's a portable PC, right? Are we? Is that what we could call it? Because it's not new. Obviously, there's there, it's there's, an there's Android half... tablet with a controller. Well, it's got an X86 processor in it. Is it, it's not running Android, is it? No. It's running it's Linux. Running Linux. Yeah. And what's Android based on Linux? It, it, it's an that's a butchery. And I'm, you also, call, hate I'm in the also calling it an that. Android tablet because that's about as performant as it's going to be. Okay. Um, <laughs> the, this is a, this is a freaking hot take. This is man. We're in the middle of a heat wave, and Caradog is bringing the heat right now. I disagree entirely with all of this. It will Although, successfully play Fortnite on performance mode. And yeah. That's about it. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. So yeah. Okay. The performance of it is not stellar. Um, you know, there. Are, so portable PC. There's half a dozen of them on the market at the moment. They're not the first to market with it. However, they're the first high-profile brand, I think, to market with it. They're also um, the first brand with actual software developers. Yes. Um, whereas all the other ones just run Windows. Um, yeah. Although personally, if I had one of these. I'd probably want to run Windows on it so I could have all of the perks of being able to run like Discord and stuff like that on it anyway. Um, but you can, I presume it has a web browser. 
Uh, well, uh, yeah, I suppose it's, so, it's actually. Running, it's yeah. running a full desktop Linux. That's a good point. And distro, the, basically. Yeah. And actually, now I think about it these days, what would I want to run on it that I could not want run in a web browser anyway? It's where What you, apps do I have installed that are actually native apps and yeah. not just running an Electron? Yeah, that's just it. You know, it's it's the it's the Chromebook problem, isn't it? It's just like, oh, Chrome can't run uh, native apps. And it's just like, well, what are you actually running that doesn't already run in a Chrome browser? So, hmm. Okay. What, do, what do you do on the internet that Google doesn't already own? Yeah, and as Thomas Alaskan just said as well, um, uh, uh, you can install Windows on it as well, which they have confirmed. Um, yes. So, and yes, Caradox is a Chromebook there as well. It's the Lenovo one. S. S. Hmm. S. It looks quite nice. You're complaining about the screen on it, but I S3 think you're being picky. S340-14. Yeah. Well, yes, because also the last laptop I used was a £2,000... Um, Surface Book. Yeah. Yeah. I want a Surface Book screen in that. Yeah. You want a Surface Book then? No! No! No, I want a Surface Book screen on that. You want a Surface, a surface Book that costs £400? Maybe 450 <laughs> I'll give you 450 yeah, Okay. I'll raise um, you a fiver. <laughs> so, at any rate, yeah, um... So um, uh, yeah, I, I I I'm fine with the software on it. Yeah, my my beef with it is, um, the pricing on it is competitive, but I think they've had to make too many compromises to the point where I don't want it anymore. Because let's so the base price is three hundred and fifty, but for three hundred and fifty quid, you get sixty four gigs is of it? yeah, it's three fifty. Oh, okay. The I thought the price. base price was four fifty. Well, that's just it because it's three fifty for the sixty four gig EMMC one. Is it? Oh, okay. Yeah. I thought we... the EMC one was four fifty. No, and then it was five yeah. ninety for the next no. one or something. No, it's like four fifty oh, okay. for two fifty six gigs of NVMe. Oh, okay. So the thing is, is the three fifty quid one with sixty four gigs of oh. EMMC. It's a switch. Yeah, it's a, uh, it, uh, it's a switch, except it's got no exclusives on it, so you may as well buy a switch and then be able to have the exclusives. Um, and th th which and that that's my first beef, is it's a case of, yeah. for the same money, you can buy a switch and be able to play the switch exclusives, whereas True. the Steam Deck has no exclusives. I'm like, this doesn't do anything that I can't already do with a laptop streaming off of my gaming PC. Um, now I know that's a bit of a stretch, but the point stands. Now I imagine the you... sofa experience would be slightly better. Yeah, but then the other issue is so you you've got to pay so you've got to pay four hundred and fifty for it to have two fifty six gigs of NVMe, and now you're cooking. I'm like, okay, now we're talking. But the problem is now it's four hundred and fifty pounds, which is you know that's that's reasonable. But again, this thing has got a it's the equivalent of a 720p screen. It's 1280 by 800. It's not even. Is it? a, yeah. Oh, okay. It's a seven-inch screen. I thought not that, I thought they'd actually done um, 720p screen. It no, it's 16 by 10, which I actually okay. approve of because 16 by 10 is awesome, and I want it back. I think uh, you know I, we we both agree on that. 16 yeah. by 10 is. I'll, I'll take I'll take three yeah. by two. Ah, uh, yeah. Okay. Like three by two. Okay, we're going back. I want a Surface Book. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, uh, so, yeah. Again, so, you know, the 16 by 10 screen is cool, but it should have been 1080p or equivalent. So, I... it doesn't... It's got, a, it's got a boring screen on it. There's I... nothing interesting about the screen. And also... Maybe. However... Hmm. It being that resolution means it might actually be able to play games. It's something above 12 FPS. Yeah, that's kind of what I thought. And I have a suspicion that was why they did it. Is they were like, this thing isn't fast enough to run anything above 720p anyway. Yeah. So why bother giving also, it a better screen? why do you need more than 720p at 7 inches in a device you're holding like this? Potentially, yeah. Kind of thing. Well, yeah, I don't know. I can, I can kind of understand that. And also, certainly, I feel like most of the people who are going to buy it aren't going to be the people who particularly know what maybe but then also we're living DPIs. in you know like if i can have if i can have 1440p on my phone why the hell have i got 720p on a 7 inch screen you know 
Now because I know you that's need 1440p on your phone. Yeah, but you can have that beautiful clear text, which means when you're using it to like if you're if you've got a if you've got a low DPI screen, so let, let's call it a 720p screen because that's yeah. easy to understand. Um, if you've got a 720p screen at seven inches, reading through chats and text messages is gonna suck because you're gonna have to have two lines of text on the screen. You're gonna have to be uh, at 100%. You've got no screen real estate for browsing. Mm. And if you zoom out, the text becomes mangled, which makes mm. it hard to read. That's why we want high DPI displays because it means we can zoom out on stuff and still be able to read it. That's what high DPI is about. It's not about whether you can see the pixels or not. It's about clarity of text and being able to cram more information in the screen and have it be readable. Mm. But of course, that's not what this is for. So I'm kind of being unfair there anyway. It, it is very much designed for, at best, you might be watching videos mm. kind of thing other than playing games. But it is kind of a case that, yeah, just... <sighs> So it, it feels like 720p is a letdown because it should be more. But at the same time, it's kind of a case of, but you're not going to see those extra pixels yeah. in games on a screen that size but at, then, at that view distance. I also think that it is a pretty safe bet to say that a second generation version of this device is going to be either OLED or 1080p. It's the first Probably. thing they're going to upgrade on the second generation of it. Maybe, maybe when we're on like third gen um, OLED panels. Yeah, maybe. So, okay, yeah, so that's that. And then my other beef with it as well is it's twice the weight of a Switch. And I don't know if you've actually held a Switch handheld before, but no. the Switch is as much weight as I'd want to hold in my hands for any. Like, I'm not, I do not find a Switch comfortable to use handheld unless I'm sitting at a desk or on my lap doing that, which I don't really want to do either. You have you have to do that. You've got to have your elbows on a desk or something. Actually holding this in your uh, holding a switch in your hands for any reasonable amount of time, not a great experience in my opinion. And this thing is twice the weight. So it needs a monopod. Yeah. So it needs a, one of those little spring power monopods so you can kind of go. Yeah. <laughs> Or failing that, like with the Switch, if you find that uncomfortable, you can put it on the kickstand, slide the, the Joy-Cons off and hold the Joy-Cons in your hand and do, and do it that way. But you can't do that with this because it doesn't switch. So, mm. you know, this and again, this is kind of my issue with all of these portable PCs, um, not just the Steam Deck, but I think they've all got that problem. I think they're a great... I, I love the concept, mm. but I'm, I'm, you know, I think... Unless, unless I'm riding a train to work every day, where I'm just where I've got like half an hour to burn every day, just sitting on a train wanting to game on something, I can't see when I'd ever use it. I feel like 2021 is not the year of yeah vast quantities of train commuting. Yeah, um, but then on the other hand, I think by that argument, the response to that is, well, okay, this isn't for me. If yeah, abso gonna, oh, so, absolutely. Yeah, I fully accept the fact that the Switch is not a console for me. Yeah, because I am not interested in any of the games that are on there, particularly. Yeah, or I have access to dramatically better editions of them anyway. Yeah, a la Doom twenty sixteen. I have it on PC. I have it at one hundred and forty four FPS. I have it in four K. Yeah, etc. I understand. That's why I don't particularly rag on the Switch. Other than people who say it's the greatest thing ever, I'm like, no, it's the very, it's very good for its niche. It yes. is not universally the best thing yes. ever. In the same token, as a gaming PC isn't the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. They got but the it's arguably got a much wider niche mm. because it's also so much more competent in so many more things. Yeah. So yeah. yes, because like on on a similar note, like this. Um, the, the the switch again it, it attacks its niche no more no less because uh, like i think yeah. that's that what like in a very similar vein everyone has been has been moaning about the the new oled switch and mm. it's kind of, that's kind of a case of like lots of people were upset that there was no switch pro yeah. and then a lot of the pundits turned around and said nintendo never promised a switch pro the oh, yeah. on, the only thing we ever saw was tech websites with rumors and the rumors were actually completely unsubstantiated claims. The only thing we ever had that was close to a Switch Pro 
is by virtue of the fact that there are parts available that would be perfect for a Switch Pro. Yeah. And I think, I think that's I think that's why there was so much disappointment over the OLED Switch is that yeah. Nintendo never promised anything more and they were yeah. not obligated to deliver anything. Yeah. But I think people's frustration is that there are plenty of parts that are readily available on the market that you could drop straight into a Switch without any major overhauls and make it better. And it's just like yeah. there's be- there's a better CPU that they can drop into it. I like think... the 4K upscaling. You can just stick a 4K upscaler in the dock. Bam, you've got 4K upscaling. You know, there's plenty of things that they could do, but just have chosen not to. And everyone's just like, oh, okay. We, we knew you never said you were going to do this, but it's there and you could do it and it would make it better, you know? Yeah. That's my take. Um, yeah, it's just kind of. I don't know. I, I think you, there are lots of opportunities that you could really rip the switch apart. However, prove it. It is proven by the amount it has sold mm. that that doesn't affect people enjoying the device. Yes, which that itself is another conversation because that stems into the it's Nintendo. People will buy it, whatever, and Nintendo that. And it's a case of that doesn't make it good or even adequate. People just buy it because it's the best they can manage from a company that is holding a lot of beloved IPs. You know, like that. There's, there's I, I I know. Like I've got friends who bought a Switch. They don't like the Switch, but they bought it because they're like, but I want the games that Nintendo is selling. I don't like the Switch as a product, but this is the only way I can yeah. get more of the franchise that I like. Yeah. Like, for example, they'll be like, I want more Pokemon, I want more Zelda. The only way to get that is to buy a Switch. So I yeah. guess I have to buy a Switch. So, we, and as I say, yeah. that's, a, that's a very complicated issue in and of itself. Yeah, I was, I was very lucky that I never really interacted with Nintendo at all hmm. growing up. So I have zero allegiance to any of their pro- proprietary stuff that's Mm. not quite right their own properties their stuff that is held for ransom by ultimately crappy consoles yeah and so yeah i have no vested interest in that and i don't want to play any of the stuff that is a nintendo exclusive at all Mm. none of it appeals to me at all so it's just kind of yeah, yeah. You don't have a horse in the I race. I am very, I am very free to just criticize it as the piece of hardware it is. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. And I think, I, feel I like... think the thing to, um, that I feel was possibly a mistrick about the Steam one, the 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 Steam Deck. Mm. Is that what it's called? Yes, that one was that it doesn't have an NVIDIA GPU in it. They didn't get NVIDIA to buy in to releasing DLSS support on Linux. They didn't mm. use that device to strong arm NVIDIA into providing DS- DLSS no. on Linux, which would have been a massive boon for the community and a massive boon for the device. Yeah. Even if it can only render it 720p, you can DLSS that up to 1080p and it will look really good yeah you can it even will stretch that good to, enough you can stretch that to 1440p or even 4k and it will look fine yeah the average console gamer won't notice the difference yeah Espe- because D- dls said that's a but the dls yeah. deep learning super sampling 2.1 mm. is magical yeah it is it is incredible the level of detail it can resolve. Yeah. And it does bother me the fact that they're talking about playing AAA games on this thing and I'm just like, uh, this is like what what is it? It's 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 a four thousand series Ryzen APU, isn't it? Basically. They have it I don't think they mass, mend it. It is a reasonably cut down Xbox S. Xbox Series S. Oh really? Yeah. Interesting, yeah, because they. I, I, all I knew was that it was a Zen two core, so I just assumed it was going to be a four. It was going to be yeah. a um, four thousand series Ryzen. Is it two core full thread? Two core full thread. Yes, running, I think so. Running it, running it, something yeah. like three gigahertz. Yeah, 
Can anyone confirm now what 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 was the what was the core count on the Steam Deck CPU? Why, why don't we just look at the specifications? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You do that. While, while you do that, I'm I'm going to break open one of these packets because I said I'd build one of these. So I'm going to start building this while we chat. So yeah, four core eight thread. Really? Oh, it's four core eight thread. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and it's RDNA2. Oh, okay, that's not terrible. Yeah. The RDNA2 part is the impressive part. Yeah, I was going to say, that's better than I thought, because the problem is, I was kind of putting, okay, so it's a 3400G equivalent in my head. And it's like, no, that's not fair. It's better than that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that part of it's impressive. Yeah. A Series S, but right, yeah, a, a, a lower end Series S running at 720p. Okay, yeah, yeah that's... that's it, it yeah. could be... It could be mm. good, yeah. But I think it will re very much require developer buy-in mm. to very much optimize, have pre-made profiles for games to run on it. Yes. Um. So yeah. you have. So you load a game. The game detects it's running on a Steam Deck and instantly loads this profile, which is the optimized version for the Steam Deck. Yeah. Uh, compared to the um. You know, or in similar vein to like pre-made optimizations for like the Switch edition uh, of games. So yes, kind of in that category. Um, so yeah, so it's kind of that. So I feel like that's what kind of sold the Switch was it's having the buy-in from developers to specifically optimize games for the Switch platform, and then that's kind of what has made the Switch for sort of the impossible ports possible, like having Doom Eternal on a Switch and things like that, was the buy-in from the developer of the game to make those optimised profiles to strip out and remanage and so on to make it yes. fun even function, let alone function well. Yeah, so, that yeah. makes sense. Yeah. So, yeah. I love the fact that the first thing when I go tech specs and then no really show me the tech specs, they don't show you the tech specs. They go, this is the keyboard layout. Yeah. It's like, are you trying to hide the specification from me because you're embarrassed by it? Yeah, I don't know. Like, I think the, the specs are fine. I you know. I'm just like, like, like they're not, the, the specs don't blow my mind, no. but they're exactly what I would expect from this. And it's also the fact that, you oh, know, wow. like, the, have. the thing is, is oh, that's interesting. like, if, if you... If you ignore the Switch comparisons and you compare it versus other portable PCs, then it's very well priced. Because I think those other portable PCs are like, you know, £500 and up. Yeah. So the, the fact that they're putting it out at, you know, again, the 350 priced one is dubious because it's got garbage um, storage on it. Yeah. Um, which I think is a is a, like 64 gigs of eMMC. That's a deal breaker in my opinion, um, and I'd be like, no. If you could, yeah. uh, if you could put your own SSD in there, it'd be fine, because you could buy that and then stick your own storage in there later on. But yeah. I hear it's not upgradable. No citation needed. So for that, I'd you... imagine that it's going to be a completely sealed unit. Yeah. Because why wouldn't it be? Yeah. So that means you have to buy the 451 to get any kind of decent user experience. Because yeah. EMMC, EMMC is garbage. Do not buy EMMC. They um, say that it is a socketed 20, um, 2230 M2 module. Okay, so if you can but open it, it up, it, then it's upgradable. But like you so, say, it's... Yeah, yeah. It's, I don't know. It is certainly not standard end user upgradable. Yeah. However, that it could... Is, theoretically, that could mean you could take that to a mobile repair shop or a, computer, or a savvy computer shop and say, can you put more storage in my Steam Deck? That seems plausible. Possibly, yeah, you know. hopefully. So, um, yeah. But yeah, um, the yeah. thing that the thing that interests me um, is tangent is the fact that obviously it's got a memory controller on there that can use um, LPDDR5. Yeah. Um, on effectively Zen 2, so it's got an upgraded um, I/O die, yeah, which can do DDR5 at 5500 mega transfers. It's like, that's fair. That's yeah, pretty damn fast. Yeah, maybe that's how they're squeezing the performance out of it—just mm. extreme memory performance. Oh yeah, because obviously this is Zen we're talking about. Zen loves high-speed memory, and obviously that. But at the same time, that's only fifty-five hundred mega transfers mm. compared to GPU memory, kind of thing. So it's a case of on the integrated side, it's still a bit meh. Yeah. Um, compared to a GPU, but then the sort of 
general IO, the RAM side is very good. So it's yeah, both. Mm. Um, it's it's. I feel like it's very good for integrated. Yeah. It's not very good if you're comparing it to a graphics card, but then it's not a dedicated graphics card, so it's kind of that um, middle ground to yeah. a degree. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I just feel like it's limited in ways it possibly didn't need to be. Yeah. Also, I love the fact that someone was trying to sell pre-orders for it for two and a half thousand. I saw that. I, I saw them up at five thousand as well, and I'm just like, I don't think this thing is getting scalped. Like, I think this thing is going to sell, and you know, like, um, um, and there, who was it? Uh, I just rolled off screen again. Oh, I can't find it now. Someone, uh, someone in the chat said that we were coming round to it, and I'm just like, I, I don't hate it. It's just not something I'm interested in. But I think it's a reasonable product, and I think, I think this is possibly going to break in. I think this is possibly going to break open the portable PC market in a way that other people have been trying to for years. Like, you know, the Nvidia Shield and stuff like that. They've all been trying to do this for years, and I think this might be the product to do it. But it's also not a product that I'm interested in buying myself. But as I say, that's because I don't feel like I have a use for it. I don't feel like it's for me. Um, so, I yeah. Would I would be reasonably interested. I'm just going to cut into super quick, just to quickly explain. The kit I'm building here, I've no idea what it is or what it does. It's probably going to count or do lights or do some kind of spinner. It might be a, I think it might be a stopwatch. Um, I'm going to build it and see what it does. I have no idea. <laughs> anyway, continue. Um, I was going to say, I'd be interested in a slightly upgraded version of it in a laptop format. Mm -hmm. because, uh, yeah, okay. Because yeah. as a laptop, yeah, as yeah. a laptop, this is way better, yeah, than most of the fifteen watt APUs we've got in laptops currently. Yeah, I was about to, I, I was about to say I want to slap you, but the more I think about that, the more that makes sense. For actually. like a fractionally upgraded version of that, so you give it a boost target of twenty, a, a maximum boost of twenty watts because it's a slightly bigger device. Yeah, but then you shove it in an eleven inch laptop. Yeah. That's that. that's not a bonkers idea. That that I would be interested in yeah. as well. Again, not specifically for me, but it feels like that's a really good yeah. other use for this as well, especially if it's got full Type C out and stuff like that. Yeah, so you can plug it into a full size screen. Yeah, I was so going to say ultra portable that you can do your word processing on, but also if you're somewhere and you can dock up effectively, mm. you can also play games yeah i was gonna say it needs an accessory scene um it needs an accessory scene so it can have uh, a stand or a docking station or something like that that you can sit mm. it in and have a keyboard and mouse on hand so you could effectively use it, it like i want to say this would work better as a tablet um but on the flip side, it's just like, well, if you give it a kickstand, then it can be a tablet. You know, a kickstand and a Bluetooth keyboard and mouse. Bam, job done, you know. Have they actually confirmed that it's, like, got Bluetooth? Oh, yeah, Bluetooth 5. Because I was half expecting to randomly scroll through that and it'd be like, oh, yeah, psych, it hasn't got Bluetooth. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> or something weird. What the fuck is going on with this? But yeah. It, yeah, it very much feels like it's one of those things where it's going to be... It's either going to be incredibly hot and loud mm. and have a really short battery life, or it's going to be tolerable and tolerable and not actually very good for the money kind of thing. Still, yeah, it, I I don't know. I I don't I don't want to be as with many things. Never buy the first generation of a product is kind of my hot take on this. I I think this is going to be a reasonable product. I'm, I'm not going to buy one myself. However, I have a suspicion that a second generation one, if it starts taking on, I'd be like, you know what? That'd be a cool thing to have. I might start getting interested in that. Um, are there any SMD components on this? Nope, it's all through hole. So uh, this, should, this should be a fun kit. I've been sitting on this kit for a long time. Uh, and yeah, I was going. I was probably going to do some kind of dedicated stream for it, but I'm like, well, no, we do practical stuff on the tech show now, so why not? According to the official specs, yeah, 
the official weight of the device is half that of the switch. Wait, I thought it was twice. Have I? It's just... a hundred. It's a hundred and twenty grams, apparently. Have I just grossly misinterpreted two stats that I saw? Oh God! Oh, I... there's a dock. There's a dock on the bottom of it where they've put the weight for the dock. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, right. Fine. Yes. I was going to say there's no way it's half the weight of the switch. You know, like yeah, there is no way that that thing is half the weight of a switch. That oh, is. Yeah. That so confused me because I just quick scrolled and the stats continued, and then I was like, "Add the deck to your wish list." Yeah. Okay. Hundred and twenty grams. What? But no. Yeah. Oh. Although the fact that there is an official dock, what does the official dock do then? Uh, uh, it docks with it over yeah, USB C, yeah, and gives you DisplayPort 1.4, HDMI 2.0, and Ethernet and stuff. Yeah, Ethernet, USB 3.1, USB 2, yeah, and also power. Yeah, does so it sit on the dock or is it just a cable connection? It seems to just be a cable. Yeah, hmm, fair enough. The inference from that is it's yeah. just a USB cable. Yeah. So interesting, but yeah, USB power delivery pass report. Yeah. Hmm. Oh yeah, does it have a touch screen? That was the other thing the I keep forgetting to check. I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. I no, mean, it doesn't. It doesn't mention it on the spec yeah. list. But I it's suppose got, it doesn't like, need one. Pads. Yeah, because it's got the two haptic pads. Yeah. It's got the haptic pads and the, yeah. and the joint. Yeah. Sticks. And also the the touch screen. It might on, end up being the, the touch screen on the switch. Isn't that useful? It's very circumstantial as to when the switch's touch screen is actually useful. So, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And that is a diode. Gen 2 Zen flopped. What are you on about? Gen 2 Zen. That was when it kicked off. Yeah. What are you on about? Yeah. No, I don't think so. No, Gen 2, Gen 2 Zen did very well. Um, and also, then Gen... don't forget that Gen 2 Zen is Ryzen. 3000. Uh, yes, true. Yeah, 2000. Ryzen 2000... Um, did well because that was when Ryzen actually started becoming good, um, and then Ryzen three. But then Ryzen three thousand is when it became a, a wrecking machine because that's when it overtook Intel, kind of thing. Ryzen two was yeah. okay, yeah. I think Ryzen one was a bit of a flop, but then on the uh, on the flip side though, it was one of those things where it's like it wasn't great, but it was also a really, really, really important product yeah. for AMD. Yeah, it was the fact that actually to kind of prove the point to myself, um, I reread all of the Zen, all of the mm. Ryzen 1 reviews from like an Antec, um, or from like, and watched the ones from like Gamers Nexus and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. I went through all of that just to kind of see what the feeling in the industry was at the time. Yeah. Because obviously it's impossible to get that feeling now looking at the products because you know what came after it. Yeah. yeah. Um, and it was kind of a case of looking at it going, did they look at it and go, these products are crap, but holy crap, look how much it's improved. Yeah. Or did they go, these products have a niche and look how much it's improved. Yes. Or were they like, oh my God, it was amazing. So what was the answer? What did they think of it? Um, basically... It has its niches, but for the love of God, don't buy it for a gaming PC. Yeah, interesting. Was base was basically the response. Yeah, because um, it, it was still a matter of why wouldn't you get Intel? Yeah, yeah, because Intel is still giving you like twenty five percent performance uplifts mm. in games, sort of thing. So it was like you're spending what is arguably more money to yeah. get lesser performance. Yeah, but only in games, sort of thing. Yeah. 6.7k. Yes. Very good. Yeah, OG Ryzen is quite good for the money on the used market. As long yeah. as you're getting it like £25 a processor. Yeah, that's the problem. The IPC on it sucks. Because you can get Zen Plus at like 50 Yeah. It's like second hand 2700Xs are like 60 quid, Or at least they were. Last time I looked, so it's just kind of a case of it's like for that much, it's like yeah. And I don't know why it's you'd all... go first gen yeah, because if you, you go second gen, at least you can upgrade to fifth five thousand series. Yeah, later, it kind of kind also of wanted to. It kind of also begs the question that if you're if you're going 
if you're going to sort of that point, you may as well buy a second-hand Intel seat, like get go Skylake Intel from that era. Because like with Skylake, with Intel Skylake, Skylake, you've also got all of the overclocking that you could do on it as well. Yeah, Whereas, which, is a, you know, which is obviously because that that's a niche interest, but it's a, another interest. Yeah, that's right. Um, and you know, if you're buying if you're buying old because you're low on money, you know, you could buy an older Skylake CPU and then clock the balls off of it and have something that's still got pretty decent performance these days. Yeah, you know. And that's the thing is, it's not even difficult to do that. You know, I'm not, I'm not being one of those like, sort of, oh yeah, no, just whack that up to six gigahertz, bros. It's like, no, with with old Intel's, it's really easy to get a fairly modest performance boost just by giving it an all core overclock and bumping it up by a couple of hundred megahertz. You know, give yeah. it a little bit more voltage. It's not that difficult yeah. to tune that in. Yeah. Um, you know, like with Ryzen, overclocking is complicated. It can be done in certain circumstances, but it's a bit complicated. Whereas Intel, you know, they do still have very simple and direct overclocking. You give it more voltage, and you do, you, and you add multiplier. You know. Yeah. So. Do do do. B four fifty carbon AC and twenty seven hundred X. Yeah. Was it? What's your two thousand series you've got? Was that twenty seven hundred X? Yeah, yeah. How's that one doing? Is that still doing well? Fine. Yeah, that's the thing. It's it's really hard to tell when you're CPU bound in games, isn't it? Well, I don't use it in a gaming PC. Yeah. So, so yeah, it's kind of yeah. It's very hard to tell when you actually need more. I've completely forgotten what this resistor is that I was about to drop in. I think it was a one K. <laughs> I've entirely forgotten what the stuff is. Yes, it's a 1K. And just in advance for everyone who's just like, ah, learn your colour codes, I can't be asked. So, <laughs> But yeah, but it's like, it's kind of a case where it's like, you've got 2700Xs going for like £70 on eBay. Uh, 70, yeah. So it's a case of, I don't know why you'd go first gen. Yeah. I mean, if you're, yeah, like if you if you can't afford that, then it's kind of a case of, you're getting down into the weeds of, you know, are you sure you can afford to build a computer kind of thing, in a way, I guess. Yeah. So, yeah. Even, like, a 1600AF is still, like, 70 quid. So it's like, I can get a 1600AF for 70 quid. Yeah. Or I can get a 2700X for 70 quid. Yeah. And the 1600AF is a 2600. Yeah. It's a case of, or I can get a 2700 for the same price. Yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of... The 1600AF there is... That that's sadly overpriced because it didn't have the supply. Yeah, and it's commanding a higher value as well, just because it's a newer processor, um, like yeah. uh, or it's a, it's a newer release. And it obviously, got released more recently. Yeah, if yeah, it's absolutely. if it's if it's a more recent CPU, then it will be cut priced high, even with the equivalent performance. Because we see the same thing in graphics cards. It's why some of the um, uh, it's why sometimes some of the older graphics cards can be cracking hidden gems because their performance is still on par with newer products but yeah. just because they're old it lowers the value even though they're still actually quite good yeah absolutely so yeah but yeah 2700x is the equivalent to a 4790k for single thread scores yeah yeah but then obviously as soon as you go into anything multi-threaded the ryzen is going to destroy it Certainly, because um, I've got a 4790K in the stream computer at the moment, and like, I'm guessing that a 3600 kind of trades blows with a 2700X, roughly, um, and the 3600 decimates the, 46, the 4790K for real-life usage. The 3600 is just flat faster. Yeah, the 3600 was an astonishingly good little CPU. Have I still got one? Yes, I have got one. Yes, I have got one kicking around. I have one somewhere. Yes. Yes, because it was out on loan for months, but I actually have it back again now. Yes, it was the it was my 3800X that I've sold. Yeah. 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 What kind of soldering iron do I use? Um, today I'm going to use... I use electronic soldering irons, and I'm going to use either... I've got two. I'm going to use either my TS100 or my Pine Silk. Vote now in the chat for which soldering iron I should use today. Wow. They, they, they both use the same tips, so they're functionally identical. 
Wow. That was a good deal. And they also they have the same firmware on them, so what did uh, you 3, spot? 3600 for £71.80. 3600 for £71.80? Yeah, that was a good price. Yeah. Because for £1.80 more than a 2700X, mm. 3600 Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> 3200G for 70. Stuff parts faster will be here for oh. six hours. You shush, Mr. Kuru. <laughs> However, you're absolutely right. I do out. I do actually need to speed up. I do actually need to go faster. 10K resistors. Let's go. I'm trying to actually be talking while I do this as well, but it's difficult. There, it, it looks like there are some RAM kits that aren't horrifically priced on eBay right now. And it's just like... Yeah, I guess. What sort of thing are you seeing? Because RAM prices... Just like, 30, just like 3,600 kits for like 60 quid. That's it's good. Like, that's yeah. Hard. Yeah, because I was struggling to find any kind of RAM kit that you'd actually want to buy for less than 70. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was struggling with that recently. And I'm like, really? Is that where we're at right now? Yeah. Um, it surprises me. Um, or surprised me just how much of a price increase there was. Um, just looking at any speed... Um, but still, uh, but just first, first word latency of less than 10 nanoseconds. Yeah. And if you instantly jump to like minimum price £200 for a 16 gig kit. Yeah. I was just like, oh, okay. And that's not even particularly, ah. that's not even particularly extreme. Yeah. But it is, yeah. But do those RAM kits have RGB? Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Probably not at that price, although you can get them there sometimes. Were, there were some of the Corsair Vengeance Pro Max Dubri What's It light bar editions. Yeah. I need to do my heckin' RGB video. I need to do a lot of videos. This is why RGB is bad and none of you should have any. <laughs> I should make a YouTube channel. <laughs> what, saying RGB is bad? No! <laughs> Just so I can make videos and put them on there. Uh, I'm making a YouTube channel that tells people they're wrong. <laughs> so that's just everyone keeps going sort of, oh, does Caradog have a channel and stuff like that? And it's just, you should just come on one day and be like, I made a channel. On it is one video that just explains all the ways in which RGB is bad and shouldn't exist. <laughs> all the ways that you are wrong and inferior for liking RGB. Yeah. A love letter from Caradog. <laughs> Just be one of those channels that blows up but only has like 10 videos. Which happens now and then. Now and then I look, I, I go to a channel that I like and I'm be like, I'm going to sit and binge their old videos. And I go to their uploads page and there's only like their 10 most recent videos there. And I'm like, oh, apparently, yeah. Did they just delete all their old stuff? But, oh, yeah. I f oh, I found you when you were new. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> They just blew up really fast. Um, and case in point, it was... Have you ever heard of Stuff Made Here? No. Okay. They're a maker channel. Um, I, I presumed. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, yeah. <laughs> Look. Shush. Anyway. Uh, but yeah, I, 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 wanted to binge, I wanted to binge Stuff Made Here's channel. And when I actually looked, he's only actually got about 20 uploads. And he's on like 3 million subscribers. And I was like, oh, did you just delete all your old stuff when you blew up? Because some oh, channels yeah. do that. They just delete their old stuff when they get big. Um, but yeah, he he's done oh, some really rad stuff lately. God. Yeah, a couple of his videos have been getting pushed really, really, really hard. Yeah, he's done some collaborations in the right places. Either by chance or just by... Either by chance or deliberately, he's collaborated with the right people and gotten big reach. He got... Yeah... But like um, his uh, most recent video, the one that says seventeen thousand eight hundred and seventy-five pounds of tools to make this. Oh yeah, that yeah. video has been getting pumped everywhere. Yeah, it well, it's a it's a workshop tour. People love workshop tours. It's one of the reasons I got to do the hundred thousand subscriber special and then do a shop tour video because that is just if I did a shop tour video, that's free views right there. That video will perform well for no other reason by virtue of the fact that it's a tour of someone else's pad. You know, it's literally MTV, Welcome to My Crib. People love that stuff, man. People love I'm it. I'm always so confused by when you look at the YouTube homepage 
when it's on a generic account. You know, mm. when it's on a when it's on an incognito oh, tab. In. Yeah. And just like the stuff is on there, I'm like, do people really watch this drivel? Yeah. Is this really is this really the lowest common denominator I need to go for? Yeah. It is kind this... of it kind of makes me sad about it, it. It's one of the things that makes me very annoyed at YouTube not really like YouTube should push the maker community more, and I don't see that say that just because I consider myself like in terms of in terms of. Um, like if you ha if you did really broad categories, I think I would count as a maker channel because I'm making, fixing, repairing that kind of thing, you know. Uh, and I think the maker the maker community is the most powerful part of YouTube, um, but apparently that's just not what they want to sell. And like a lot of people, one of the ways of criticizing YouTube competitors is you go to the, the you go to the let's say. Um, Let's take Odyssey for example. You go, you know, you go to the Odyssey homepage and you go, right, I go to odyssey.com and what's the first thing I see is what the these channels that are on their homepage, that's what they think their channel their website is about. And a lot of the time you can look at that and be like, there's a lot of questionable content here that is not necessarily good or bad, but not necessarily what you'd want the first impression to be. Um however, when you look at YouTube, it's actually just as bad if not worse. Because, you know, it's just drivel, like you say, you know. I I have never watched a video by by the Mr. of Beasts. Oh, Mr. Beast. Uh, yes. Yeah. But uh, I'm just like, uh, he has done a fantastic job of curating interest in yeah. his content. And he has absolutely nailed all of it yeah. everything absolutely all of it and i do not deride him no the, the, uh, as the a person as well yeah. as a person as well he's actually really quite nice yeah i he a was on a tom YouTubers. scott video yeah love him or hate him they know what they're doing yeah that it, in some cases that almost makes it worse it's like you know you're doing this yeah you you, you yeah. know you are doing the same thing as yeah um infant alcohol syndrome I mean, what? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that—that's the thing. I've forgotten what, what what resistors I'm putting in. Mr. Guru will shout at me. Um, but um, <laughs> no, Mr. Guru, not again. No, no. Twenty-two <laughs> K. But yeah, it, I mean, it's we've had this conversation on the show before. But it's like the old issue of um, clickbaiting and stuff like that. Is all the big ones? They all clickbait because that's what they have to do. But at the same token, I'm just like, I wish that the big guys could all say, look, we're big and we have the power to influence change. Can we all agree that clickbait is shit and try and spearhead an anti-clickbait movement? You know, can we just all agree to stop doing it so we yeah, don't see, have to do it? Yeah, see, the problem is with know? that, though, all it takes is one person to not do it and they'll yeah. gain all of those views that yeah. the other people have given up. Yeah. So it's kind of a case of like this is game. this is a lose lose for them. Yeah, I can dream, Harold. But you're a chair. <laughs> right, <sighs> oh. I'm gonna actually turn on the soldering iron now. By popular request, we're gonna use the pine saw. Oh, oh Tom Scar. <laughs> Did you know there's like twenty Asduff movies now? Yeah, because it's the only thing he's got to try and remain relevant. Yeah. Big sad. Yeah. Imagine if he hadn't gone completely off the rails. Yeah, I mean, he's come back on the rails now, I believe. Last time I saw him, he was uh, collabing with another YouTuber. He has actually sought the and, biomedical assistance he required. Yes, and when I saw him on that video, I was like, oh, it's Tom Scar. I haven't seen him in, in, a hot mo in a hot minute. And I was like, he's looking great. You know, because like, there was certainly a time where I saw Tom Scar and I was like, dude, what happened, man? And obviously, depression happened, but yeah. Um, and also being a little bit creepy. Maybe, yeah. Uh, that, that, however, that were, yeah, yes. yes. But anyway, yes. soldering. Yes. <laughs> At the very least, though, the last I saw of Tom Scar, I, you know, I saw him in someone else's video, and I was like, he's looking great. You know, I hope he's in a better place now. But yes. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Right. Um, I hope also, he's in a better place. 
Well, I don't. You know what I mean. You know what I mean. I've got the wrong. I've got the wrong screwdriver to remove the tip that I want to use from the T T one T S one hundred. I should have just used the T S one hundred. It would have been easier. Also, um, I missed it up there. Is um, uh, J B with the four dollar sticker? Thank you very much for the super chat, my dude. Much appreciated. Um, uh, hang on, sir. I need to find my T six. Oh dear. What's going on in chat? Yes, he is in Devon, says Teltag. I, I don't know what the context is for that, because I can only read the bottom, like, three lines. Oh, Tom Scar is in Devon, apparently. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was going to say, if if you mean us, then no, we are in Dorset. Come which, on, come on, come on, Teltag. Which is a completely different location to Devon. Yes. Despite the fact that it's basically next door. Is it Devon, then Cornwall, or Cornwall, then Devon? Devon, then Cornwall. There we go, so we're next to Devon-ish. And we can argue about who invented the cream tea. There is an argument about that, I believe. Oh. Soldering, everyone. Soldering. And maybe some tech news. Have we got any other tech news? What else happened uh, recently? Uh, How's, how are you getting on with Windows 11? Is, there, is, it, is, it, is it going anywhere? Like, or are we, is it still like... Because they're on the second, the second public build of that is is out now, isn't it? Has it upgraded much, or is it still just like, yeah, well, it's the new skinned Windows uh, news at eleven. It it is it is it is something. I feel you don't I, sound super stoked. I about feel it. I feel the same way about it as you felt about Windows eight previews. Okay, I'm going to need more clarification because I hated Windows 8 when it came out. No, the pre, the uh, oh, okay, the previews, the preview releases. I'm, I'm thinking yeah. more of your opinion of the preview releases when you're like, "Huh, I'm going to get to like this because I have to." Yeah. Okay. So does that mean that you're not really very enamoured with it, but you're just like, "But it's the new version of Windows, so I'm going to get on that bandwagon." It it's very much a case of it's like. You have fixed a lot of things that weren't broken. Yeah. It feels like an awful lot of not broken things have been fixed. Like, I still have absolutely no idea how to do an awful lot of the stuff in the sound control panel. Because it isn't obvious. And I'm uh, like, oh, walking people through this is going to be a pain in yeah. the dick when they're on the wrong audio device. Because it's really not clear which one is the selected audio device. Uh... Have they got an easily selectable one? Like, um, I should zoom in on this while I'm actually doing Zoom! I'm Enhance! We are an hour into the stream and I've started soldering and I'm doing it from a, a, about a 30,000 foot overview. There we go. Um, so, yeah, like on Windows 10, you click on the, on the volume control in the bottom right and you can select outputs there. Can you do an equivalent of that in Windows 11? Because that was incredibly handy in Windows 10. I should also probably try it on a device that hasn't got like 1100 audio devices for the first time. Yeah. Because I'm trying to do this on my desktop, at uh, my PC at home, and obviously I've got all of the outputs from the Stream Deck. Yeah. Plus I've got my TV, plus I've got my Bluetooth devices. Yeah. So it's, it's busy. It's very busy. Um, but it's still a case of... Windows 10 made this nice and clear. Yeah. I need to I need to actually get it installed like, on something so uh, I can actually start giving first impressions and stuff like that. Um, the vast, vast majority of Windows 11, I'm like, yeah, cool, whatever. Fine. It's Windows 11. Who it's cares? Windows 11. Yeah. It's absolutely fine. There's nothing broken here. Absolutely fine. Nothing to complain about. There are some parts I've picked up and I've just kind of gone... Oh, I don't like it. Yeah. And this is the first time I've ever looked at a new version of Windows and gone, I don't like it. Uh, interesting, yeah. Like, literally the first time ever. Yeah. Like, the charms bar on Windows 8, I went, cool, okay. Yeah. You know, full screen Metro apps and Windows 8, I went, yeah, okay. Hmm. Some of the settings panel, I'm just like, uh... That makes me a little bit sad, because when I saw the screenshots of the new settings panel, I thought it looked really nice. I thought they'd basically done... The gone settings the Apple panel group. is 
fabulous by comparison. Okay, yeah. Certainly. However, at the same time, certain parts of it, you're just like, ah, Jim. It's one of those things where you're more annoyed that it was so close to being good. Yeah. Yeah, that can be very frustrating. It's it's kind of hit that point where so much of it was so close to being good that it's now more frustrating that it isn't. Yeah. And um, also, like, um, if Windows 10 is anything to judge by, we can safely assume that we're not going to see any radical changes for quite some time. Especially as it seems like with the preview of Windows 11, they've kind of focused most heavily on the appearance of it, first of all. Yeah. It seems, doesn't it? My, yes. There are features that I feel are weirdly missing, like the ability to move the taskbar. Yeah, can anyone confirm that in the chat? Are there any hacks for moving the taskbar? Because I'm sure I saw a video there somewhere is, about that. There was, for the very first dev preview, okay. a registry hack you could do that apparently broke almost everything, ah. but it forced the taskbar to the top of the screen. Ah, okay, so it's not really... Yeah, okay. There, there was a hacky ability to somewhat hack it around yeah. to make it go to the top of the screen. This is why I hate YouTube video titles, because they go, oh, do this in Windows 11. But what they don't mention is, you don't actually want to do this in Windows 11. So yeah, so there was that. Um, there was also, in the very first um, build, there was a way of making, forcing it to load the Windows 10 start menu, because apparently the Windows 10 start menu was still in the very first dev build. Not surprising. Yeah. So, that was interesting. Yeah. Um, but... It's kind of a case of... Also, I have, I've i had a weird issue with the Windows 11 start menu where sometimes it just won't search. It doesn't register that it's picking up key presses. Yes. But I had that on Windows 10. I've had that once yeah. or twice on Windows 10. There are certain then a month circumstances or, Then a month or so later, fixed. Yeah. New build update, new random oh, Windows yeah, update, I remember, ta fixed. Yeah, I remember, because you had that as actually a long-term thing, because there are certain circumstances on the, on the start menu where where search will not function. Like, if you've just dragged a tile, yeah. you cannot search. You have to close the start menu and open it again before yeah. it will search. But your search was just completely dead, wasn't it? Yeah. It just randomly wouldn't actually... No, the start menu itself was just completely dead. Yeah. Somehow, and it was a... Yeah. Whatever. Fine. Oh, yeah, I couldn't click on anything. So that's where I started searching for everything. Yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> Basically. And I was like, okay, okay, I guess I'm keyboarding literally everything through the start menu because clicking doesn't work for reasons unknown. Time to install Linux and command line everything instead. Yes. Sorry, that was trying. I was trying to make a veiled jab at Linux because I don't hate Linux, but I'm just going to keep jabbing at it because it's very funny. And it always gets a response from people going, oh, actually, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> that. <laughs> I don't hate Linux. Anyway. But yeah. Um, but like, yeah, there's just a weird thing where sometimes, like, you'll press the, I'll press the Windows key to start typing hmm. for it to search. And it just won't. Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, okay, I've had this before. It will magically fix itself. Yeah. Um, just weird little finickety things like that. Build also, updates. it's a dev build. Yeah. That, that's Duh, the kind of thing. Yeah. Like, I think that's also the question is that I really... I'm, I'm stuck in that thing where I want to install Windows 11 on something so I can start getting some time on Windows 11. But also, like, um, but following my own advice, don't install it on anything that you need day to day. But at the same time, if it's not something I need, then I'm not going to use it. So, like, I'm just like, uh, I don't know where to do it. I might it's why I've got... I might install it on the front of house laptop, because the front of yeah. house laptop is something that I use every day, but if that laptop falls over, it's not a big deal. There's I, nothing saved to it. The, on, the only thing I actually use it for is data entry with customers, and I could get literally any other device and do that within 10 seconds. I could, I could pull out my iPad and do that. Yeah, that's it. Um, so... I, I think f the front of house laptop would be a good place to put it. It also means that if someone comes in and goes, oh, I heard about this Windows 11 thing, I can be like, sure, here it here's the current dev builds kind of, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. So, so yeah. Um, one thing I am intrigued by is I've no idea if it's because the build updates are smaller, but the two dev build updates that I've had since I've been on the dev build have been like, huh, mm. complete. Yeah. 
So I've no idea if that's because of it. But yeah, it's just been like near instantaneous for the build updates. And I've just been like, okay, hmm. interesting. I also like that they give a little estimate for how fast they think it's going to install, which is nice. Oh, that's cool, yeah. Does that estimate seem vaguely accurate? No, it seems far too slow. Ah, well, well too slow is better than too fast, I guess. But then, yeah. again, also, my desktop. Yeah, yeah, that's true, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm, a, I'm kind of saying, for the average person's computer, yeah. I feel like it's probably about the same. Yeah. It's probably about right. It may be a little bit too fast for someone with a hard drive. But yeah. I don't know if having an SSD is a requirement now. Oh, God. Oof, I can don't I think... still buy a computer with a hard drive yes, from an OEM? Yes, you can. That will meet the minimum specifications for Windows 11? I would say yes, um, because uh, at the moment, oh, I mean, no. case in point, on the Dell website, if you're shopping Inspiron, you can still buy um, a basic Inspiron laptop with a one terabyte hard drive in it. Um, As well? Yeah. No. As in, like oh. a, a secondary drive, right? No, no. The the main the, system the, the, drive. The secondary drive, yeah. <laughs> no, no. Anakin Skywalker <laughs> keeps on glaring. No, it's got a one terabyte hard, hard drive in it as its main storage. Um, and yeah, uh, I mean, obviously, as soon as you go up by one or two, it's it's the old case of they say laptops starting from three hundred pounds. But the spec that you'd actually want to buy is actually 400, you know. Um, so, yeah. I, like I there, hate there's... to disagree because that specifically says PCIe NVMe solid state drive. Oh, okay. I and that's £280. Okay, I saw that's one horrifying. somewhere. horrifying. But then on the on the flip side, though, like they're sell a lot of their low-end laptops are 4 gigs of RAM, which is... Com oh, yeah. Yeah, and 4 gigs of RAM, that's a deal-breaker. It's also got a Celeron N4020. Yeah. Whatever the... Fuck that is. Yeah. No, that's that's a big note from me. So right, to get something that isn't an Celeron or an Athlon Silver. Oh god. Yeah. Oh my uh, 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 Intel Ryzen. Intel Intel Ryzen. Right. The cheapest thing you can get with a processor that isn't a calculator. Yeah. Is four hundred and eighteen pound and a penny. Which comes with a Ryzen mm. 3 3250U, 8 gigs of RAM, yeah. and a 256 gig. In <sighs> Intel's a bit hit and miss. There's a couple of good ones in there, but they're surrounded by bad spec for the price laptops. And then there's, yeah. And then in Intel are still playing the game of confuse them with numbers and eventually they'll buy something. And for... it's like they've got some good options there. But you really have to go digging to find the to find the right one. For ninety nine p more, yeah, you can get an eleventh gen i three. So an eleven. Wait, an i three one 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 five g four. Hmm. With Windows ten Home S mode. Ew. Four gigs of RAM, and one hundred and twenty eight gig SSD. Or I can spend 99p less and get a Ryzen. Yeah. With more RAM and a larger... Larger... St yeah. What? Okay. The other issue as well is that Dell Wait, are what? not... Um, what? I Dell can... keep refusing to get onto the affordable 13 and 14 inch bandwagons as well. The, the, I really... the specs on these, they like... make no sense. I, I really wish Dell would start making 14-inch Inspirons. The only ones they've got are the 2-in-1s, which cost a lot of money. And 14-inch laptops are magical. What? So I can spend more money by, admittedly, a pound 41. Hmm. But I go down to an Athlon Silver. I go down to 4 gigs of RAM and I go down to 128 gig SSD. So I'm spending more money and I'm downgrading every component. Yeah. Dell? Yeah, their website Dell? is weird, man. I swear their specs are computer generated and they have algorithms that just generate the website. It's the only thing that makes sense. Either that or they've got like a team of 100 people doing it and they're not talking to each other. Uh, I saw someone in the. Zero oh, yeah. Sense. Martin Barker asks, What am I creating? I think it's a stop clock or stopwatch, I think. Um, so, Apparently yeah. there's a 13 inch. Got lots of chippies to put on it in a minute. 
There's a 13 inch Inspiron. Yeah, but look at that. It starts at 650 quid, man. Yeah, but it comes with an i5. And a whopping 8 gigs of soldered RAM. Yeah. 8 gigs of That's soldered it. RAM. You know, for 650 quid. Yeah, no thanks. Mm-hmm. Like, just give me a, a, a 13 inch or a 14 inch i3 laptop I with 8 disagree. gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. You, I will sell 100 of them. It really frustrates me that they don't have the spec that people actually want to buy or that people should actually be buying. The 14 inch 2 in 1 starts at 520. Yeah, uh, again, like this is why HP are killing it because HP sell a myriad of affordable 13 inch and 14 inch laptops. And that and that's the size that everyone wants right now, 13 inch and 14 inch. But obviously because it's a HP it's bollocks and it'll break. Yeah. Uh, let's see, 10 microfarad. The cheapest Ryzen 5000 laptop you can get out of Dell is 580 quid. Yeah, and yeah, I don't know. A five eighty, I'm not a five eighty. I want, I kind of want to be in a higher end than Inspiron. You know, I kind of want to be looking at um, uh, latitudes or something like that. Did Dell ever make a longitude? <laughs> they missed a trick. It would have been hilarious. That should have honestly, surely that yeah. should have been their two models. Latitude should have been a latitude, latitude and a longitude. Yeah, but then on the other hand, no one would know which one they had. Everyone would be like, "Oh, I've got a latitude." No, wait, it's a longitude. Uh, no, I can't remember which. It they would have been just for the joke, which is never a good thing. And yeah, I I agree, Teltac. I love latitudes. Uh, latitudes are for life. I although. I really want an XPS just for the infinity display. See, Although, the 30... latitudes have got infinity displays now anyway, I think. They make 30 different 17-inch screens. Mm. See? See? Yeah. They're not bad. They're just yeah. all Alienwares. Yeah. Which makes them bad. Yeah. Oh no, yeah, there's also the XPS 17 that starts at basically two grand. Mm. The Dell Precisions are good as well, yes. They're oh, workstation dear. class. What is this? Ten microfarad. I found this. A, I find this a bit odd. Alienware N17 R3. It's yeah. got an i7-10875H. Intel, please fix your names. Yeah. With 32 gigs of DDR4-2666. Yeah, because that's what the CPU officially supports. <sighs> yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully, it's not sixteen rank stuff like that. You know, recent thing that's been doing the rounds. After I saw that, well, yeah, uh, but sixteen LC- rank is literally designed for laptops. Yeah, sixteen rank exists for laptops. Yeah, it's not mandatory. Well, it's not something they have to use though, because like since that LTT video came out, that sort of blew the lid off of sixteen rank um, or X sixteen. 16- one R X sixteen memory modules. I've actually been looking when I take mem- memory out to see which it is, and I have seen quite a lot of sixteen um, X sixteen modules. They are out there. They're quite common. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, a lot of, Mac- d- lot of MacBooks have got them. Laptops. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Indeed. Apparently, you can put the taskbar on Windows eleven on the left in personalization. Can you? Yeah. Surely it's not that easy. Can you? Because it's not in there on either of the PCs I've used. Yeah. And it's not on the one that Flink's used. Yeah. So. Citation needed. So, sorry, what's the root? Person, personalization and taskbar and taskbar behaviors and taskbar alignment, center or left. Oh no, that just puts the icons to the left of the taskbar. Oh, it doesn't that does move, not the, move actual the taskbar, taskbar to the left of yeah. the screen. Yeah. No, no, no. I want the taskbar on the left of the screen. Yeah. And I want it on my second screen. Yes. My non primary display. Yeah. Vertically along the left hand side. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And yes, as Teltac said, we're currently using the Pine Soul, Pine, the, the Pine 64 Pine Soul, which is. Pine, 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 Pine. pine. Yes. The Pine 64 products are awesome. Uh, Pine, send me free stuff, please. 
because I don't I don't have an affiliate link, but you make cool stuff. I want to look at the Pine sixty four watch when it when it's ready. I feel like it's not ready stuff, yet, or it's not ready for me yet. Pine stuff is excellent. Yeah. If you if you know how to Linux command line. Yeah. If you're a developer. Yeah. If you're an actual Linux developer. Yeah. Developer. Yeah, which I am not. So I'm not ready for a Pine Soul. I'm not ready for a Pine sixty four Pine watch. However, or a Pine soon- phone. No, no, not. I'm, I'm not super interested in the Pine phone. It's not for me. Uh, however, the the, the Pine it's... watch, when they've got a version of that that's like stable, because I think it's almost there. But when when they're when that thing is ready to go, I really want one. It sounds like it's perfect for me. Maybe possibly. Do the transistors I next? I agree. I am. I'm feeling the transistors. We're going to put those in. Uh... I want it up the left hand side of the screen because that's what I want. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Because well, I, mean, I have more than one screen. See, the funny thing is, having the tra- having the taskbar vertical makes an awful lot of sense on modern sixteen by nine displays. But I always feel gross when I have mine there. S eighty fifty. I see. Also, my um, s- screen layout will probably make people unhappy. Just in general, because the way that I have like my taskbars across various screens and stuff. Hmm. I feel like there's no right way to do it when you have a, a 55 inch TV as your main screen. Yeah, or where you run like three monitors all in different like orientations. Yeah. I think that's the uh, the main reason why I'll always stick with just a, a dual screen setup is I can't bring myself to have an asymmetrical screen layout. Yeah, it's it's bizarre. I, I swapped my screens around because I used to have my portrait screen as my right hand screen and I swapped mm. it to my left hand screen and now and then have landscape, landscape, portrait as opposed to landscape, landscape, portrait. See, that's fine. It's very weird how yeah. it feels completely different. Yeah. And I think what bothers me is when I see a lot of the time, I, I see a lot of streamer setups, like a lot of, a lot of big streamers have big complicated multi-screen setups but they always have enormous gaps between the screens and that always bothers me because i want the smallest amount of gaps between my monitors because i'm like if i'm having to do a lot of panning with my head then that's that's wasted head movement which sounds really annoying to if i'm having to yeah. make large movements i may as well be in vr yeah, pretty much. S eighty fifty. I'm waiting for um, like the next next generation of VR headsets mm. that have much higher DPI screens and much better Fresnel lenses and stuff. So How we... are you getting on with yours? I haven't used it. You haven't used it. All right. No. All right. Do you want to talk about it? I haven't used it since it left here. Okay. Um, which Ca- is kind of entirely what I expected to happen, to be Fine. honest. Yeah. Caradog bought a... Uh, Ca- which one did you get again? The Vive Cosmos. Yeah, Caradog bought a Vive Cosmos, and he bought it down to the shop on the weekend he got it. I had some friends over at the weekend, um, and we, we tried it out, and I thought it was awesome. It's the, It was my first time using VR properly after just having a, a, a cursory look at a dev kit years ago. Uh, and I really liked it. He got it at a crazy good price. Um, but yeah, haven't used it since. But yeah, fair enough. Okay. But oh no, 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 no! You're I not at the. Did. You're I not at the. I'm going to send it back stage, though. I can't be bothered. You can't be bothered to send it back. I mean, to be honest, for the price you paid for it, then yeah. If you'd pay, if you paid list price, then obviously that might be. Yeah. yeah. It's um. I started playing. Senawas. The hell? What's it? Oh no, I've forgotten what the name of the game is. Oh, Senna. Da, 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 da. I want to say like Senawas Revenge, but it isn't. I started playing that with it, and I was just like, oh, that's cool. That's mm. really cool. Because it's a game you can sacrifice. Thank you, Teltag. Um, it's a game where you can play keyboard and mouse or controller, but you can also look around. Okay, in a yeah. chair. Yeah, so it's a seated position. Yeah, but yeah. it's a um, third... It's a third-person camera. Okay, yeah. But, like, you turning, your head movements controls the character's head movements. Yeah. 
So then you look to the left, the character looks to the left, and the camera pans behind them. Hmm. It's it's very well done. Okay, yeah. And I was just like, yeah, that's cool. But I haven't got... I I didn't get into the game when I first played the game. Okay, and this was the yeah. second time I picked it up because I was like, oh, yes, I remember... Um, I remembered that it supported VR. Yeah. Um, so I'll give it a go. And, like, the VR-ness of it is fabulous. It's great. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's an excellent demo of VR adding yeah. adding a je ne sais quoi yes. to a game. Yeah. But I never particularly got into the game itself. Yeah. So I kind of have to... And if, to... You're, if you're playing a game just because it's VR, that's the wrong reason to be playing the game. Yes. However, it's kind of a case of I absolutely would play it again. Yeah. But also, I find it really hard to start, actually click play on a game. Yes, I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people can relate to that. Yeah, the amount of games we've got in our libraries that have zero hours played. Yeah. Also, the other difficulty with VR is I can't tab out and chat to someone. That's yeah. my biggest issue with it. Yeah. Is I cannot play VR at a time when I think that someone or someone or peoples may be demanding my attention because I have no way of oh, swapping to it. Yeah. You know what would be really cool is if you could have a alt tab button on your controls which would slide in a secondary screen I need where you to... could have like which would just show you your secondary monitor as a slide in so you could just glance at discord for example i need to i need to play around with um the like the windows mixed reality portals and the windows vr features yeah. to see if i can kind of bodge something around for that also there's like virtual desktop um as well or something like that or vr desktop or something there's a specific program yeah that 3d arises the desktop in the sense of launching programs and yeah. websites and stuff and kind of try and mess around with that and see if I can bod something in for that that would work. Um, so yeah, I tried playing Phasmo sit Oh no, I have used it a couple of times. I tried playing Phasmo sit sitting down. Yeah. It did not go well. No, I can't it, imagine it, it would. It did not go well. Yeah, Phasmo, you definitely got to be standing. Because the character was very much in, in a constant three quarters crouch. Yeah. And I could I couldn't quite pick up stuff. Yeah. That was on the floor, and I couldn't quite place stuff on the floor. Yeah. Without kind of going. Yeah. Phasmo is a really tricky one as well, though, because like when I I tried Phasmo, uh, this is Phasmophobia, by the way, for anyone who hadn't picked that up. I tried Phasmo when you brought it around, and the issue there was the 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 level is even though we had a largeish room to play in, the level was just at the point where I'm just like. I'm just going to immediately use the glide controls because there's not enough space for me to move around. Yeah. So it's one of those things where you need to be standing, but also there's zero point in having a large play space for it either. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I don't know. I, I really want to get into it. And I feel like you've got a good opportunity because of how you managed to get a pretty decent headset for very little money. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's... It's not a case that I'm like, oh, it's terrible and it's worthless and it's not worth it. Yeah. But yeah. You just I, haven't used it much yet. Yeah. I also grabbed a couple of side-by-side -side 3D videos. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And st um, skipped through that. And I was just like, oh, yeah, yeah, I could kind of get into this. Yeah. You know, this is, a, this is an experience. Yeah. I could get into this. The problem I had was that there was no way of calibrating where the center was okay yeah because it was a case of obviously when you're watching content you kind of want to sit back a bit mm. and like if watching a film or whatever you know it's a case of sitting something like this you know or like this or whatever or like you know head back on the headrest yeah and looking up the problem is the center the center of the display was calibrated to there ah, i see so i yeah. had to sit like this yeah. to watch it and actually actively look down to look at the center of the frame. Yeah, that's no bueno. And I was just like, someone. I feel like someone fucked up with the calibration on the 3D on this one. Yeah, and again, that's the thing. Anything that, any kind of motion control has to have a recenter button because it's going like just it for will drift. Yeah, I was going to say it's going to drift. 
and no matter how good it is, it is going to drift. And also, like you say, you may want to deliberately center off center because you're sitting in a weird way, you know, because you're 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 slouching or you're laying back. And, you know, and you might want to slouch so your center point is there. So you're not having to do that all the time, you know. It's also the fact that it'd be amazing if you could use VR laying on your back. Yeah. For, for, for you know, for, for watching films and stuff. Hmm. Because being able to do that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, that'd be cool, yeah. It was also the other thing that would be great is if I could watch 3D videos without needing the three, the, without being in VR. So I can watch the 3D videos just as 3D videos in the headsets. Yes, yeah. As opposed to hmm. being in a 3D world. Yeah. So like, so you could put on a headset like that and just watch films on a plane. Yeah. That kind of thing. Yeah, without yeah. having to have, without having to be like sort of, oh, okay, we've got to go into the 3D universe and load it from the. So universe you're sat in your and... seat in the aeroplane yeah. going. Yes. Don't worry, guys. I'm just selecting a film. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And whilst I'm saying, and whilst I'm not saying you wouldn't look like a complete freak, it'd mm. still be a case of if you're sat in your seat just there watching a film, no one's actually going to care. But if you're there, kind of going, "Hold on yeah. a minute, guys, don't worry," you know, randomly yeah. touching them up and smacking them in the face with a wand, yeah. they're going to be very annoyed. <laughs> yes, that and that that's definitely going to uh, limit the adoption. Of um, of VR, you know, kind yeah. of in the same way is one of the reasons why a lot of people very rarely use um, uh, voice activated digital assistants like Siri and Google and stuff like that is that it's still kind of weird to just go, hey, hey, whoever. Um, hey, whoever. <laughs> I, I, I wanted to give an example and I was like, what can I say that's not going to trigger a load of things for people? Hey, Jose. Yeah. Hey, Jose. You know, it's it's still, you know, it's just. I mean, there's always going to be some mad lads out there who are more than happy to walk down the street and just be like, ha, ra, 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 to, the, to their phone. And then also, like, it has become normalized because, like, when you see someone walking down the street with uh, just talking to no one, immediately you're just like, oh, they're on the phone. They've got headphones in or they've got earbuds yeah. in and they're on the phone. That's normalized, but it's still a bit weird to be like, to just start hey jose just in the middle of a room. And yeah, yeah my problem as well is is that I'm yet to find a virtual assistant that has been competent or faster than me taking the device out of my pocket, unlocking the device, and then doing the thing myself. Siri can do it depending on the use case. I haven't used Siri in a long time, but when I was running an iPhone, um, I did start using Siri because it was really good just to be like, um, you, just to be like, hey Siri, set an alarm for nine a.m. And it would just, and like, if it was like 8 p.m. and you said set an alarm for 9 o'clock, um, it would say set an alarm for 9 p.m. You'd be like, make it in the morning. And it would say, okay, set an alarm for 9 a.m. And you'd be like, yes, that's correct. It was really good and intuitive and, and like, or like reminders and things like that. Because for me, the idea of taking my phone out, opening the calendar and typing something in, that's too much effort for me. But just saying, um, just saying, hey Siri, set a reminder for the 22nd of November, um, family day, and it will just enter that. Now, I don't know if, if Google can do that or not, because I don't use the Google Assistant. I need to try it out. But yeah. that is one thing that it's very good at. Um, just, bef just to finish, a couple of people were asking about um, the Pine Cell again. I'm currently powering from DC supply. I've got a, um, I've got a 19 volt laptop power supply plugged into this guy. Um, but you can power this from a power bank or a battery pack or whatever you want. It's got all kinds of type C power delivery or barrel jack. You can power it from whatever you want. So yeah. I was seeing if I could I spy your um XT60 to barrel jack down there. No, only only because your battery boxes. only because the yeah. battery was there. Yeah, I was gonna say I've got a battery handy there, but I don't know where my Yeah, the, the cables are out and about somewhere. So yeah. Uh, Andrew Dicker with 20 Canadian dollars. Thank you very much. You've always missed the live streams, but you've always wanted to thank you for the li for live for the amazing content. Your channel has taught me a lot about computers and have inspired me to successfully flash motherboard BIOSes. Good job, Andrew. Thank you very much. Much appreciated. And I'm glad that's helped. That's, that's super cool. 
well done for having a go. That's exactly the kind of success story I want to hear. No matter how simple it is, if you've watched one of my videos and it's made you be like, I'm going to try this for myself, and then you've done a thing, op success. So yeah, big yeah. thanks for that. Uh, you may continue. Um, Gee, thanks. Yeah, because I kind of cut in. You did. Yeah. Has the moment passed now? Yes. I'm sorry. You've spoiled the mood. Okay. Anyway, no, I have <laughs> I have a Nest Mini that I got for free. Oh, yeah, yeah. For some reason. Oh, yeah, because they were, they were giving those things away with Pixels, weren't they? With Pixel phones. I don't know. Google just <laughs> sent, Google sent me an email one day and said, hey, have a free one of these. And I went, okay. And they, okay. They, yeah. they said, have a free one of these. It's in the, it's in the post to your registered address. Oh, okay. And I was yeah. like, sure. Well, that's a way to get people into your ecosystem, I guess, isn't it? <laughs> Just give the damn thing away. Um, and I find it annoying to use because it seems so very dense. So unbelievably dim-witted. Uh, yeah. Um, and like, it won't detect when I'm talking to it most of the time. Oof. Okay, well that's critical failure straight away. And I'm like... That's the point of it, yeah. Yeah, and it's the really weird thing though, because like, the very first editions of Assistance... Yeah. Like, the... What was... Oh, the very first edition of the Android Assistant, before it was actually called the Android Assistant. Yeah. Like, we're talking 2010, 2011 here. Yeah. I could use that absolutely fine, because I because it didn't try and have a conversation with you. Yeah, I don't need it to have a conversation with me. This is what, yeah. Um, I would just go, play this song, and it would play the song. Yeah. I would go, set an alarm. It set an alarm. I yeah. would go, what is the weather in this city? It would tell me the weather in that city. That's and what then I want. Would, and then it would shut up. Yeah. I don't want it to have a personality. I don't want it to tell me jokes. I don't want it to twerk. Well, no, I want it to tell me jokes when I say, tell me a joke. Well, yeah, sure. When but, I explicitly yeah. ask for data, yeah. give me the data. Yeah. When I do not ask for the data, do not supply the data. Yeah. I, I, at the very least, least, I wish there was a toggle. It said, no, I want to talk at you like the computer you are. Yeah. I have no problem with talking at you like you're a computer. Yeah. I do not I do not need the molly molly coddling of a human interface type thing on it. Yeah. Or or sorry, a persona. Yeah. Well I wonder it. if that is um I wonder if that is a cultural thing. It's kinda like the um it's kinda like the the issue of um um you remember when we were having that conversation of when when your digital assistant accidentally goes off um, and your phone starts wittering at you or something and you just go, shut up. And it then starts going, oh, I'm sorry, would you like to send a complaint? I'm like, no, I want you to shut up. And, and we would... And it, uh, the it's the like thing that I problem, found hilarious, it? though, is the number of times my watch will mm. trigger... When, when it's linked to when it's actually set up, yeah, because I'm, I'm using it just as a timepiece right now, as yeah. opposed to a smartwatch, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> because fuck you, yeah. <laughs> Big, I feel really weird not having a watch, but yeah. also I'm kind of like I'm annoyed by this physical manifestation as a smartwatch. <laughs> Yeah, what on earth am I doing here? I will to... get over it shortly. Yeah. However, I'm like, I feel weird not wearing a watch. Okay. And this is... Have you considered just wearing a not smart watch? Yeah, but then that's at like a thousand pound and... Oh, Caradog. <laughs> Have you considered buying a ten dollar Casio? Uh, no. Casios are cool, man. No. No. <laughs> This is the difference between me and Caradog. <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, Casio F91W, hell yeah, I'd stick one of those on my wrist. Whereas Caradog is just like, no, if it doesn't, well, I, I, here we go, let me try this out. If it doesn't have Omega written on it, then it's no good. How does that land? Actually, it's Omega. <laughs> yeah, there you go, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of success, of success. Uh. 
Oh, dear. So I guess a smartwatch is actually one of the cheaper watches you could buy and still feel like it's something to be proud of then. <laughs> <laughs> I was looking at the um, Tick Watch. Tick Watch? Yes. Watch by Tick Watch. I'm not... Oh, okay, yep, yep. I, um, I, ha- I have no idea who they are. Okay. Yep. L- LTT did a short circuit on their E4. Okay, uh, yeah. Last week, two weeks ago, three weeks ago. That sort of time scale. Um, yeah. They currently probably make the best uh, Wear OS smartwatch pair. All the right, E4 yeah. being their cheap one, and then the Pro being their very much not cheap one. Yeah. Um, And they're good, and I would buy one. But I know there is a big new update coming to Wear OS. Yeah. And I'm like, Google have not confirmed that anything at all that exists out there is getting updated. Yeah. They have also inferred that all of the current watch watch OS devices are going to die and stop working when this update comes out. Oof. Like, they're killing the entire ecosystem. Oh, wow. Has been the inference. Yeah. I'm just like then I don't buy any products until this update comes out. Yeah. So all sales are dead? Yeah. You morons? What? Yeah, what are you guys doing here? Yeah, Yeah. I don't know. It's very weird. It kind of feels like... Yeah. Yeah. That's a bit odd, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. It kind of feels like going, oh, yes, the new Xbox is coming out in 12 months' time. By the way, none of the games we release in the next 12 months will work on your current console. Yeah, that's, what? it doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. I I know it's difficult to gauge. Like it's very difficult to honestly sell a product knowing that there is a superior product in the pipeline that will render that obsolete. But that's kind of just the way the world works, really, isn't it? That's why Dude. buyers' guides exist. Yeah. There is a there is a good time to buy and a bad time to buy. But when you literally say, "Yeah, no, we're going to we're going to obs- we're going to obsoleteify everything." in the next couple of months it's like well yeah at that point you'd be like well i guess i'm not going to sell anything then yeah it's but, just yeah. very weird it's it's very weird that they've done it because i feel like it must be a miscommunication yeah maybe it must but then also be. it's google so who the hell knows yeah yeah but then it's also google and it's kind of a case of we're like we're also kind of surprised they haven't randomly killed off wear os yeah because they got bored that day and more people needed to suffer. Yeah. Or something. Uh, I'm just... Talking of things like that, it makes me annoyed that Google Wave never took off, because Google Wave is literally Discord. Ooh, yeah. Google Wave is literally Discord. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to lean back a bit further for that. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Wave was ahead of its time, but I'm having difficulty refuting your claim. Also, I think How I'm... am I not accurate, Teltac? <laughs> Google Wave was available with... Uh, talking about this from an interpersonal type of view, as opposed to a... a in, as opposed to, like, the way that Eve uses Discord. <laughs> because that does not count. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm, yeah. I, uh, yeah. Wave was a chat program yeah. for your friends that you could add, that you could embed video to or yeah. embed pictures to. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it was asynchronous, real time. Yeah. But also was real time. Yeah, I I can't I can't disagree. I don't want to say I agree, um, but I can't say I disagree. I think this is I, you know those charts where you have purist and radicalist, like 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 the sandwich chart where you have um, sandwich purist and sandwich radicalist, and like uh, filling purist and fiddly, f- filling radicalist, and you start off with the idea of um, like. A cannoli is technically a sandwich at, at the radical end of the scale, you know. I feel like we could place this on there where we're just like, you know, what 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 is a Discord equivalent? And you've got, okay, you know, purest form would be Skype. 
and then you've got Radical End is Wave was Discord, you know. <laughs> and you, do you see what I mean here, you know? <laughs> um, so it's just like, yeah, but also no. But also I can't, I can't provide a refute, I can't refute this. But also, yes, purest form is IRC. Yeah, sure. Uh, although IRC doesn't support embedded media. Which... But it's the purest form of, of chat program. Yes, okay, I'll give you that, yeah. I suppose it, we've got a... Oh my god, I did not make that switch flat at all. Am I going to fix that, or is that just yes. how it lives now? Okay, I'll fix it, yeah. I completely forgot to flatten it before I flowed all the joints. Um... Also, like, why does it matter? That's what, you know, I, I, IMG dot pix is for yeah this is true right what the hell was the old image wearing web, oh, uh, image enough. sharing website like way back in the day not like before oh, pre, pre, yeah. pre hot pics oh god i don't know i never used them because none of them ever supported hot linking all of them did that's what they were for no i'm talking about all of the ones that you used on irc because they had hot linking oh they never supported hot linking in bra in forums because I wasn't on IRC. I used bulletin boards back in the day. Mm. I, th I feel like back in the day there were two types of people. There were people who used IRC and there were people who hung out on forums. And I feel like you were either one or the other, mm. or there were people with no jobs that did both. <laughs> you know, photo bucket. Yeah. Oh, this this image is unavailable because the photo bucket account is over its monthly bandwidth. Yeah. Oh. Exactly what I'm talking about. Man, God, it's still the fact that it's still hilarious how difficult Fuck. it is to send a file to someone. Yeah. The concept of sending a file to someone. Yeah, I entirely agree. I, and it's yeah. why a lot of people still just do everything in emails, despite the fact that an email is a terrible way to send files. But it's also just a lot of the time you're just like, Oh god, that's still the simplest option for normies, though, isn't it? You know, like if you if family... it's why it's why Snapchat is so successful because it's the only way that's really easy to send a quick photo to someone, other than until Discord came along, and even then, Discord isn't as quick. I guess, yeah. I suppose by the same token, again, this is why um, I uh, iPhoto is so successful. And on a similar note, um, WhatsApp, you know, because what, WhatsApp is Discord on mobile. Fight me. WhatsApp is mobile Discord. Discord on mobile is mobile Discord. Yeah, but let's face it, the vast majority of people who are into Discord prefer to use it on the desktop. You are wrong. Go to the stats yeah. for the Adamant IT server. Those people are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Those people you, are the people who support you and yeah. like your content. If, if you're in the Adamant IT Discord server and you primarily use a mobile phone, you are wrong. <laughs> so, <gasps> I do not endorse this message. Good. <laughs> Please download the, the desktop version immediately, you plebs. Oh no. Oh no. Are you signing in now just to see if the, if Discord is blowing up? It's probably not. It's not that big. We had some guy coming the other day that was just like, "Oh man, this Discord is dead." Just because it wasn't like a 10,000 member Discord that never stopped. Where even is uh, What am I even talking about? Yeah. MSN Messenger could do it. Uh yeah, you're right. MSN Messenger could do it. Um did it? What kind of compression did Messenger have for embedded images and stuff? Yes. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Yeah. No. All you could. It. Oh, it didn't show them in line, but you could send a file, and then the person could open it, which is good yeah. enough, wasn't it? Yeah. No one uses WhatsApp here. Only Viber. Oh my. What country are you in? I'm gonna guess India. I'm yeah. guessing India. I've heard of Viber, but I've oh. never actually seen it. Or, 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 where was that? Oh, I've forgotten. Can't remember. Yeah. Although, to be honest, obviously, because of um, because of Facebook policy, WhatsApp has become a bit of a... Well, no, they backtracked... 
the the WhatsApp, the new WhatsApp Facebook spying thing. Did they roll that that back globally? Mobile only. There we go. Fourteen percent. Because I knew what WhatsApp WhatsApp's new terms and service that basically said, okay, we're we're now opening this up to Facebook. They rolled that back, didn't they? In the end, I don't know. I think they is did. The answer to that. Yeah. I I don't know if they've actually rolled it back. Yes, you or can, they Michael. Have, or they have paused rolling it out. Yeah. Because the two have very different meanings to me. Yes, but it's that's a case true. of yeah. As far as I'm aware, also Germany went. If you do this, we are banning you. Goodbye. Oh, uh, yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like, yeah. okay, that is that is a strong rebuttal. Yeah. Uh, WhatsApp largely used by scammers and porn sites. Yes, but it's also used by most people's families, in my experience. Certainly in the U- in the UK, WhatsApp is one of the, probably one of the biggest ways that just family members communicate because it's basically Facebook Messenger on steroids. I did the I I was in the very easy situation of I got my parents new phones and set mm. them up and yeah. then went by the way we're using this chat program now fair enough and they were like this is the messages app it has your text messages you send me- messages to people here yeah. it wasn't whatsapp <laughs> yeah fair enough <laughs> dc jack so um, yeah yeah, and also, yeah, people using Telegram in, in Russia, yeah, definitely the way forward, despite their best efforts. Telegram is annoying because it get, tends to get updated every two hours, but it gets updated every two hours because Russia keeps trying to block it, and then they move to another server and dodge it again. So, <laughs> yeah. I used to use Telegram a lot, but the problem is I only had one friend group that I talked to on it, and I was like, I don't want to run this app just to talk to one friend group but also that as a consequence of that i've kind of lost touch with that friend group which makes me very sad and i want to get back in touch with them but also i don't want to run telegram just for one literally one chat room so yeah clearly clearly you need to get more involved with furries yeah pretty much because yeah (laughs) there's two people that use telegram russians and furries (laughs) This is a Venn diagram. There's some crossover. <laughs> Actually, there is one other group as well. Mm. Android ROM developers, for reasons I do not quite follow. Fair enough. I don't know why yeah. they don't just use Discord, but hey. Yeah. Telegram is used for NVIDIA stock alerts. Oh, there you go. Yeah, I can believe that. Uh, also, I, it should, it's probably worth noting, just in case I offend anyone with a lot of assumptions that we're making here. We are largely joking here, by the way. So, yeah. <laughs> Oh no, I've just been mentioned on Discord. Uh oh. <laughs> oh no, I've been DM'd. It's fine. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. It's all good. Um. Uh, there was a couple of other things. Oh, I've just completely ruined my autofocus. I wanted to back read the chat slightly because I saw a couple of messages that were like, oh, I want to respond to that. Someone asked about, uh, oh yeah, any new videos for the channel subscription soon? Uh, I know I've been saying it for a while, but soon um, I need to, I need to do one more update video and then do the hundred thousand subscriber special. Um, so yeah, it is on my mind. Uh, it is something that I keep thinking about. Going, I must do this. I it's just been hectic. However, I'm going on holiday at the start of August, and that will require me to get everything out of the shop which means I'll be able to do a nice big reset on the repair queue. Everything so, must go. Yep. Yeah. So the plan is is that I'm going to um, at the at the latest I'm going to come in either at the start at uh, the start of August, you know, at the end at the end of July or the second week of August, I will have basically nothing on the bench and I'll be like, "Right, right, I have nothing to do, therefore I will make videos." So that's when it's going to happen. Also, the other thing, congratulations are in order for having a Discord server that's over a year old. Oh, nice! The Discord server is over a year old, Brad. Yes, Happy it was. End. It was only you and the bot. <laughs> yeah, but still. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. Fair enough. So, how many? What's the percentage of mobile users then? The mobile only is fourteen percent. Desktop and mobile is fifty-eight percent. Desktop mm. only is twenty-eight percent. Desktop only is twenty-eight percent. Yeah, which is quite well, surprising. But then, on the other hand, like I mean, I, I I mock people who use mobile Discord, but like I do check Discord on my mobile when I'm not in front of a computer. But like I do, like usually that's because I'm checking DMs or something like that. I hate browsing chat rooms on mobile because it feels so clunky 
going through the rooms one by one, switching server and going through the rooms one by one, you know. I don't know, man. Do your holiday video on Patreon. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Um, oh, on Patreon. Yes, indeed. I was thinking it's not that kind of holiday. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. Right, um, I've got every... Oh, right, oh my god, I've got to do all these sodding LEDs. What are we up to? We're at two hours. Right, I'm going to go into try-hard mode on these LEDs. I have, a, I have a wonderful story to tell you later that is not suitable for the stream. Damn. I was about to say, that's great, because I need you to talk for a wonderful story while I solder all these sodding LEDs. Oh, no, no, LEDs. no, it's fine. I'm sure, I'm sure we can come up with something else. I'm sure chat can engage you. All right. Engage me. New topic, the stop button. There is no stop button because I sold it. Literally, someone someone came someone came in with a with an intercom where the the push to talk button had broken, and I was like, I I need a specifically sized tactile button, and I was like, I'm pretty certain I've got one of those in one of those kits I've got. So I sold the stop button to a customer and fitted it to their intercom. Um, so yeah, we we can't stop this. There is no stop. There is only start. There are no brakes. Yeah, there are no brakes. This is this is going to be like the bus from the the hit movie Speed, or something. Get soldering. Any news to talk about? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> also, one of us should set up AliExpress affiliate API at some point. Ah uh, yes, yeah, Ka Caradog. Teltac, can you make an API for the AliExpress links? Because No, that was Teltac telling us oh. that we need to do the thing. Okay, Teltac, can you do that, please? Tell me when you've done it. <laughs> uh, just simply because the it's really awkward to make AliExpress affiliate links, which is why I don't push them. They're, I would shill a lot of products from AliExpress, but it's really awkward to make the links. Um, right, which side is... Uh, which side is anode? Oh, we also need to... Apparently, actually, you know, have the login for the account. Okay. To do the thing, to get the keys, to do the WhatsApp. I'm guessing it's that way around, I can't remember. I feel like at some point I should just steal your login for last pass so I can do all the things. You may as well, to be honest. So, yeah. Uh, let me see. Right, uh, someone help me out here. Uh, LED, the line is the cathode, right? Um... Long, long, yeah. Longer is the anode on the LED itself. However, on the board, because we haven't got pluses and minuses. Didn't solder the start button. You are correct. I'm going to solder two LEDs and the start button. <laughs> My brain is turning to mush. Oh dear. We should probably have another drink, but I don't know if I can be bothered. I'm also very hungry. Can I interest you in an aniseed ball? No. I do not like them. Caradog came over with sweets, and like if he enjoys them, that's great. But I'm just like not my thing. I've got fig rolls. What about what about an apple bonbon? An apple bonbon? No, I don't like sweet. I don't like sweet things. I'm too old. I can be fun. <laughs> I am gonna have a fig roll in a minute though, because um, I was talking about fig rolls in uh, in a friend circle on Discord. And I was like, you know what I want? Fig fig heckin' rolls. And I bought some. And that's the end of that story. Mm. We definitely need some more, more tech news. Uh, cathode is square. Test one with the LED first in case you go the wrong way around. Maybe. Cider's not that sweet. What are you on about, Teltac? He totally... He's not wrong. Cider is nuclear sweet. But it's uh. still nice. I'm going to get these two LEDs in place. That sounded a lot like cracking. Oh, I just sold the joints cracking. It's fine. <laughs> right. Okay. Let me see. Uh, let me buzz this out and see if I got these the right way around. Copperberg is not a real drink. Absolutely. Copperberg is trash, and you should feel bad. <laughs> I love it how, um, it, like, yeah, yeah. No, Copperberg is bad. <laughs> you, 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 no. Right. You, 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 you. No, I'm putting on the coffee machine. I'm actually legitimately going to put on the coffee machine. I'm okay. Gonna, let, let me buzz this out first and see which way around this is supposed to go. Hold on. Right. How do, how do, do. Okay, it looks like these are cathode switched, so I'm not going to get any help from that at all. Oh, unless that's not... No, the screw hole is not ground. I need a ground... B minus. 
Nope, that's not going to help me out either. I think the I think these are cathode switched, so I'm not going to be able to buzz it out. Anode is to the edge. Good. That's what I thought it was. I was correct. Hot coffee in this weather? Absolutely. Absolutely. It'll be fine. Um, it should be alright. Yeah. I'm actually putting... Would you like a coffee or yeah. a drink? Yes. I'm actually going to get a coffee. <laughs> would you like a coffee or a drink? I would like a drink of coffee. Thank you. <laughs> this is... I, I need a drink. I'll be right back. Yes, absolutely. Watch Carry out for on. the cables. Watch out for the cables. Yep, it's Don't fine. take over the camera. It's oh, fine. God. Not again. I went around. It was okay. You're in charge. Oh, dear. Every, everyone, you are left with me. Also, I look like I am particularly reclining at this point. Yes. Oh, I need to... Oh. Hold on. Adjusting, adjusting. Now I can actually read the chat. Hello, people. I, I've barely been able to read it. Um, for the stream because there has been a the, the, an arm for a camera the 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 thingy what's it Dubri that thing yes yes Chris indeed I need a drink do that mind thing where I pretend to walk down the stairs no no that requires effort and moving and it's hot and that's really happening that there is a decided lack of tech occurring in this stream, isn't there? I feel like the chat should get going with a tech topic of some kind, and then we can wail in with hot takes are and ridiculousness. You, are you criticising the audience for not giving us material to talk about? No, 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 no. I'm saying I feel like they should save this. Okay, fair enough. I feel like they should save this effort. Uh, save this effort of a stream? <laughs> yeah. Um... Absolutely. It's a Twitch just chatting stream. Yes, although I am not getting out the paddling pool or the hot tub. Would you guys like some lager or wine delivered? I mean, if it can turn up in the next like half hour, then maybe. Was Windows Vista that bad and justify it? I feel like this is a repeat on a um topic that we've done previously however my opinion on vista was vista was fine a lot of people were trying to run it on hardware that wasn't suitable because of how long vista was left from xp's release let me do do from xp's release there we go um so it ended up being a case of you know people were using single core low clock speed processors with like maybe 256 megs of ram so they were just not good xp machines and then they tried to move on to vista and vista obviously tried to kick everything up a gear um with a 3d accelerated desktop experience and an entirely new driver stack and all of those things so yeah So yes, I'm 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 of the opinion that unfortunately Vista was severely hampered in public opinion and by adoption by specifically in the gaming community by Steam and Gabe Newell um, specifically stating I will not support Vista for a very long time. Um, that was their attitude. Uh, so it hurt the gaming community pickup of it, and then. An awful lot of people trying to run it as an upgrade on a very old machine. Uh, so yeah, that is that is my opinion on it. It was nowhere near as bad as the general populace made it out to be. Is user benchmark still relevant? I feel like the question on that is: Was user benchmark ever remotely relevant? Chris, don't call me out like that. How dare you? <laughs> Thirty ninety should very much be selling for more than two thousand one hundred pound, and then people can get a cheap one by buying my one. Uh, but yes, uh, use a benchmark. I am yet to find someone who thinks it's reliable or relevant or useful. Um, anything more than a very rough as guts comparison tool. Thirty thousand user benchmark is a thirty thousand foot overview. It's as like, as long as you know how to interpret its misinformation. Yeah, it's like it it I 
at a stretch you can say it tells you what a what a, it tells you it let's say you're looking up a product on user benchmark it tells you what that product is competing with so like if i said i've got no idea how fast a 3060 is i would look it up on user benchmark and i'm like and it tells me okay this thing is competing with a 2070 or a 2060 super kind of yeah. thing now whether it's faster than those cards or not i wouldn't trust the numbers as far as i could throw their server room yeah however it tells me that that is the products that it's competing with and so if i know how fast those products are it gives me a vague estimate of what kind of ballpark we're in yeah absolutely and That's i think what it's good i also think the perfect example as well of how user benchmark is basically useless is the fact that it is so heavily biased towards Intel processors. Yeah. That Intel have banned it from their own subreddit. Yeah, it's hilarious at how banned they are everywhere and they still, like, ugh, man. I'm, just for those of you who don't know what fig rolls are, I'm showing off my fig rolls. I showed you your, I, show, I showed you my fig rolls, please respond. Mm. Oh. Hmm. Oh God. That's fun. Also, user benchmarks or reviews of AMD hmm. products. It's fig paste in a soft biscuit. Also, as far as I'm aware, it's not actually figs. How dare you? Ingredients: figs, thirty-two percent. Get oh, really? wrecked. Get wrecked. It's got real fig in it. There you go. Really. An awful lot of them don't actually have fig in. Oh, there you go. These are just the Tesco ones. Yeah. I would have been devastated if it had fig-flavoured paste. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> <Would you? laughs> the weirdest <laughs> Tinder pickup line. <laughs> Can I interest you in some fig-flavoured paste <laughs> cookies? I'm going to start soldering LEDs. <laughs> I feel like I feel like the mug is Chris's face when he has figs. Just <laughs> all right. I'm putting all these LEDs in this way round, and if it's wrong, well, rip me, I guess. And I'm going to put them in in tens, I think. Man, there's 60 of these LEDs. I hate everything. That does make sense, given it's counting in seconds. Hmm. They're often called minced fruit rolls. Huh. I suppose that would be uh, if they have... Um... Horse meat in them. <laughs> I was trying to find something a bit more pleasant than that. <laughs> Horse meat is not fruit, though. Uh oh! Oh no! It's an Iceland lasagna. I was about to say we're going into the UK horse meat scandal. There, if anyone is just like, "Wow, that's a bit dark," <laughs> there was a scandal in the UK called the horse meat scandal. Um, so it's kind, of, it's just a running gag in the UK now. See, the thing that I find hilarious though is the fact that these products were found to have horse meat in horse meat, which is designed, which is classified as a higher quality meat product. Than mm. the meat product they were expecting in there, and that was a scandal. Yeah, that the meat was better than advertised. Yeah, eh. okay. I don't know. Let's get People. back on the solder. I'm gonna try and I'm gonna go for a big old. Uh, I was going to call it an ASMR shot then, but I, that, I don't think that's quite right. Either way, a, a big old close up maybe, and then everyone can criticize my soldering. Don't worry, I'll make it the right way up. All right, bam. Uh, that's the wrong camera, so let's go bam, add a video capture device, add existing, cam link. Hello again. Hi. Whoop. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> Hi. <laughs> this is a tech show. I forgot to put my white wine in the fridge. And it's the only cool drink I have. <laughs> Delta. What? How do you not have cold water from your tap? 
Can I criticise my camera's autofocus? No, because I... Well, I can, because the autofocus is rubbish. Webcams are bad at autofocus. Well, that's mainly just because we're trying to use them at uh, um, point-blank range. Uh, right. Now, we, we still don't have... We need a tech topic so we can actually get this show back on track, but I don't know if we're past that point, and I don't know if anyone cares. Teltac, there's this wonderful thing called a Brita filter. Oops. You earn enough money to afford one. Yeah, if you don't have a Brit, if you don't have a Brita water filter, get one. They're really cheap and they're really good. I have one at home and at work now, just because man, they're good. Um, I need to find a I need to find a good angle for doing these LEDs at. I also need a. Uh, I also need some way of. If only I had some way of holding the PCB, like some kind of hands that helped, or something like that. You know, if only someone bought me something similar to that once before, and I actually used it. Uh, I'm not going to bother with the close up because I immediately have to pull it out now in order to straighten these out. Teltac is about... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I was about to say... I'm... Teltac is typing. Yeah. <laughs> he shoots, he scores. Right, let's straighten out these LEDs. I'm doing this at a weird, really weird angle. I'm not very comfortable, but it's working. Um, let's see, we had, um, we did the Steam Deck, did all that. There was something else that I wanted to talk about today, and I cannot remember, for the life of me, remember what it was. You not terminating your EC2 instance. I did. I have. No, I, I, oh, I, I looked up in horror then at the chat, I was like, I was wait, waiting to see if Teltac had actually said, you haven't terminated your EC2 instance. Or if he was going to say, I bet you haven't. I have absolutely terminated my EC2 instance. It's fine. I do need to update the website again, though, because I need to actually set guidelines for emailing me. Because... Don't. Yeah. <laughs> mainly just because the amount of emails I get that are just tech support emails now. Um, of just tech support emails from just people around the world. And I'm just like... And a lot of them, I'm just like, I don't know, man. Go to the Discord or something. It's just like, I'm not going to provide free tech support for a million people via email. It'd be a full-time occupation. Hit up a forum. See, what you do is you ask them for a telephone number, and then you phone them up saying, Hello, I am from Microsoft. I have noticed there is a problem on your computer. <laughs> I feel like it might be worth soldering these 10 LEDs and then turning it on. What do you think, guys? We, are we going to go no guts, no glory, and put all 60 LEDs on? Or are we going to do these 10 and see if it works? I feel like doing the 10 and making sure it works is probably the most time efficient. I by t Saying time efficient implies that you don't think this is going to work first time. Your silence is concerning. Based on today's efforts. What's wrong with today's efforts? I'm amazed that there's 273 people here. Yeah. <laughs> this is great banter. <laughs> oh, there goes our pops. Yeah. Oh, a Man, topic not related to that tech. That fiesta can do one. Sorry, continue. Topic not related to tech. I got distracted yesterday. Okay. And started looking at legacies on Autotrader. <laughs> yeah. There's not many of the Series 2 ones around. Uh, I, oh, was, sorry, I was the Gen 2 ones. <clears throat> I was looking through, and I was going through, and I was like, that's an ugly one, that's an ugly one, that's an ugly one, that's an ugly one. That's a GTB! Yeah, yeah, there's... Uh, the... There was one. There was a single Gen 1 or Gen 2. Yeah. That was it, and I was just like, oh, yeah. oh, okay, uh-oh. The Subaru Legacy, if you don't like the Gen 4, then you're out of luck with them now, because, uh, yeah, the old style ones are not about, and... It, to be honest, the new ones, they're okay, but the old ones get away with a lot of misgivings because they've got that classic 90s charm. Yeah. And if you like that, then it's fine. There was a, yeah, there was a Gen 2 and it was a JDM one. 
Oh, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, an actually good one. Hmm. But that was literally only one. I was just like, oh, that's Sadness. A... Oh, well. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah. I did think of a tech topic to talk about, and then I forgot. That super annoyed me. Um. <clears throat> Let's see. The affiliate linker for the Amazon one has been completely free. Nice. That's good so far. Uh, right. Uh, right, I'm going to grab a power bank. What is EMMC? I'll try that again with words. What e actually is EMMC storage and why is it bad? You want to take that one? No, because I can't actually remember what EMMC is. It's basically an SD card soldered into the computer. What is EMMC? Yeah. Like, um... It goes to Wikipedia. Yeah, it's, it's like, um, electronic multimedia card or something like that. But yeah, it's literally just an SD card soldered straight onto your storage bus. Ev oh yes, Evangelical Mennonite <laughs> Mission Conference. I don't think that's the the one that we're actually talking about, but yeah. Oh, embedded MMC, that, that's right, embedded multimedia card. That's, yeah. yeah, but basically it's a case of it's garbage tier flash storage. Yeah. It is like the bottomest of the bottom barrel. Yeah, you know those terrible 32 gigabyte <clears throat> netbooks that seem to be obnoxiously slow even though they've got SSDs in them? That's what they're running, basically. It's turbo trash. Absolutely trash. It's also the... Um, it also uses a different controller method. And different, like, actual, like, data layout setup, as far as I'm aware. So, that also doesn't help it and makes it a lot slower. Interesting. Someone's doing some crystal disk markage on EMMC, and it's surprisingly performant. I feel like they have lied. Yeah, uh, yeah. I feel like they've lied. These numbers, they do not feel real. Yeah, 10 and 20... Mega, uh, megabytes 4K random ops. That seems really optimistic for EMMC. What's the one on the right? That's uh, a, 120. That's oh yeah, yeah. Oh, SSD. that's on 60. Yeah, the 64 ones are getting are getting close. The 64 gig ones are shockingly good for EMMC. Yeah, I have a. But then also so, like the fact huh. that if you look at that, but look, we're looking at some. Uh, we should have got capture set up so we can show you what we're looking at. But we're looking at some crystal disk be um, uh, benchmarks at the moment. And with EMMC storage, it looks like a 120 gig. Um, oh, that's 120 gig SSD. Yeah, that's 120 me. gig yeah. Um, MVME SSD. Yeah, so I thought that was a 120 gig EMMC setup versus oh, no. 64 gig one. No. Yay! Well, it counted through those and then it beeped, so it works. Um, so I'll I'll carry on soldering LEDs you in that did case. It. Yep. There we go. It should beat when the sixty seconds are over. It did. There we go. Congratulations, it works. Oh, success. Excellent. So, we can go home now. Bye, guys. <laughs> it works. You should consider doing soldering repairs for a job. Maybe I'll do that. Hey, I fixed a laptop earlier on today by poking it. See, see, it's 15 years of experience knowing precisely where to poke well, it. Well, that's just it. That's true. I poked it exactly on the clock generator power circuit, and it came back to life again. See, it's all about knowing where to touch yeah. it. However, the previous people who looked at the laptop didn't know to poke the clock generator circuit with a multimeter, and that would make it come back to life. I'm back not even joking. Back to life, back to reality. Anyway. Hmm... Right. But yes. Um. Emm. Em, em, yeah. Oh yeah. Emmc. Yes. Yeah. So it looks. Like, it looks like the sixty-four yeah. gig editions. Yeah. Are less terrible. Yeah. I'd imagine because there's far greater parallelism. Yes. I think. Um. It, it's. They're still yeah. trash. It, it's, because they're less than half the speed of a trash tier one twenty-eight gig yeah. SSD. But. Yeah. And it's, they're getting there. It, it's also the fact that you routinely see EMMC in very small sizes, like 64 gigs. And that means it's going to wear down super quick. It's like a mobile phone. Mobile phones, you, you, you guys remember the previous generation of 
smartphones with 16 gigs of storage and how they just like within 12 months they were unusably slow yeah that's because the 16 gigs of nan storage on them wore down into the stone age and became completely useless same thing will happen with emmc mm. um because there's not enough of it yeah. and uh, this is the main reason why you should always over spec your storage because nand hates being full and it hates loss of write cycles so you need to over spec it so it can handle a, it can have a longer lifespan yeah it's <clears throat> Why I'm pleased to see that the minimum capacity on mobile phones is creeping up. Yeah. But it's I, still kind of a case where it's just like, I, I, it, it's, it still it's, doesn't feel like it's kind of going fast enough in a way. It's hard to find anything with less than 64 gigs now, I think, isn't it? Yeah. It seems like most of us, certainly certainly the more premium stuff is 64 gig plus. Yeah. Because I think the um, S21 starts at 128 gig. Yeah. So, that's not bad. And goes up to a terabyte. I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, I feel like if you need to store a terabyte of data on your phone, you're doing it wrong. And I feel like that's just a worthless flex. Yeah, but at the same time, you'll you'll never uh, um you'll never outdo the right endurance on that. True. But then on the <laughs> other hand, like my um my Huawei P20, um, you know, the reason why I still have my Huawei P20 is because it's still doing fine. Yeah. Um, like, I, um, it's got to be two going on three years old um, now, and it still feels really fast and snappy. Like, yeah. I really want to replace it with a Pixel. I really want a new phone. But there's nothing wrong with my P20, so I can't justify it. Absolutely. I think also the move from EMMC in phones to uh ufs yeah like this is compared yeah, to, to my ufs 2, 2.0 and then obviously 2.1 yeah i think that move also helped alleviate a lot of the long-term slowdown yeah because it was just a much newer flash management standard and things like that so it had better management of the flash cells and stuff yeah so i'm presuming that's helped a lot Mm, as because, well yeah by comparison uh my my previous phone um my previous phone lasted 18 months and that was a 16 gig phone mm. and at 18 months i was like this is literally unusable i need something else yeah. i mean not literally unusable but it was it was a bad user experience yeah and i'm not even a power user on my mobile phone yeah. i don't use my phone that much you know yeah absolutely. so yeah uh, Christopher David, thank you very much for the $20. Uh, love watching you build a kit on the live stream today. Thanks. What modifications can you easily make on kits when they are done? Um, thank you very much. Um, I'm not sure, really. Um, it depends what kind of modifications you'd want to do. I mean, what would be what would be cool with this is, um, I guess, I mean, for this, because we're limited by the circuit board itself, you'd need to break out to another board. But... Um, like what this thing has got, we've got a triple five timer chip here, and this is probably a decade counter, um, or it might actually be just a clock chip. But this is probably sticking. This is probably outputting a binary output, either either in hex or in binary. Uh, so, sorry, either a hex output or a binary output. You could probably get a, a breadboard and put like a seven segment decoder on that, and then try and wire this in to a seven segment display to get a numerical display for it. That would be a fun project to try and do to see if you can adapt this onto a numerical display. Um, that's just an example. Battery power, yeah. This takes a battery that is four to five volts. This is, but uh, the, the annoying thing is all of these things are specced for four to five volts, which means they're just too high for a single cell LiPo. So doing a battery mod on this would be annoying because you'd need to put in either a two cell LiPo battery or you'd have to wire in a boost circuit. Um, but then on the other hand, you could bodge in a cheap power bank, um, buy the cheapest shitty power bank on eBay, take the circuit board out of it, and you now have a, a single cell LiPo to five volt boost and charge circuit. Uh, so you could then stick that on the back and that would work as well. And yeah, you could use it as an egg timer. Change a few resistors to make it go up to three minutes. That's a cool idea. Yeah, I like that. Um, 
yes yeah, some of the one some of these resistors are probably setting parameters on the on the timer clock um that handle what it counts to so yeah that's a great idea um three AA batteries for 4.5 volts i guess you could i really hate out i really hate well i hate any battery that's not lipo so <laughs> yeah not my thing but those are certain some ideas some multicolor leds yeah you could do that that'd yeah. be a cool idea as well here's here's a question or get rgb a, a point on yeah. that why do you think that lipo has become as in as in lithium polar nom nominal 3.7 volt has become the de facto battery when life so lithium iron as in i r o n yeah has better cycle resiliency for capacity and is 3.3 volt nominal mm. why that hasn't taken off in any way for Certainly, at least in the community space. Mm, I want to say maybe because 3.3 .3 is a bit too low to do anything with. But then on the other hand, 3.7 isn't really useful either. Like up at 4.2 at maximum charge, you're getting into a handy area. But as soon as you drop off of maximum charge, like you go below 4 volts into the nominal area and it's useless again. So, yeah, that's an interesting point. And, and I'm don't know the answer to that maybe it's maybe maybe lipo was oops was um uh was cheaper to manufacture so maybe lipo cells are more cheaply and readily available mm. like is is life more is life quite expensive i i have no experience with life at all <laughs> <laughs> i didn't i, I was i i mean that literally mm, i mean that in context of this conversation <laughs> Not as an existential <laughs> crisis. <laughs> I have no experience with LIFE batteries. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, LIFE compared to LiPo, um, from the places that I've looked at, it's been exactly the same price. I presume yeah. if you buy cheap batteries off of eBay, it's going to be more expensive. Yeah. But also... That's cheap batteries off of Eve Bay. Yeah, which are always going to be a roll of the dice, I guess. Yeah. Hmm. So yeah, so I don't know is the answer to that. Um, Can you get LIFE in um, exactly the same flat form factors, like the flat cells? I don't know if it's the same form factors. Yeah. Um, I don't see why it would be... Oh... Excuse me. <laughs> I don't know why it'd be an issue to, but they exist in flats. Yeah, that's the only type I've seen them in. Is yeah. in like because obviously there's, there's, there must be some advantage to lipo that caused that to be the exact chemistry that everyone went all in on. And while LIFE is probably a drop in replacement in the majority of cases, that's not what everyone is manufacturing lipo for. That other reason. Yeah. So it's a case of certainly in the case of I've looked that energy density, maybe. Mm, as far as I'm aware, after two cycles, ten cycles, mm. something ridiculously low like that, life has a better energy density and better capacity. Yeah. Because lipo drops off so fast, quote unquote. Um. As far as I can recall, I can't remember exactly what the numbers were, but it was a very small number of cycles that uh, life then takes over. LIFE batteries take over. Yeah. So, yes, I'm not entirely certain. I don't know. Um, I wonder yeah. if the average person would actually notice the difference, because, I mean, generally speaking, you know, the, the health of a battery is, is going to largely depend on what kind of life it leads um, no pun intended. Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, and, but it's a uh, case that um... a lot of it always comes down to just how you're charging things. Like if we look at practical examples, like phones, you know, it's they, just yeah. It, it in a phone, it would have better two year battery life. Yeah. Then that's the thing. I generally find that most phones will easily give you two years of surface service as long as you haven't ragged the battery. Mm. But a lot of people just don't actually take any care of the battery in their phone. 
they will charge you at maximum speed all the time. Now, that's not necessarily their fault. Part of it is a lack of education. You know, if the phone ships with a super with a supercharger, that's what that's the one that everyone's going to use all the time. Yeah. And if everyone supercharges their phone at 20 watts for its entire life, surprise, surprise, it ain't going to be very good in after a year of service. And I think that's one of the reasons why, despite my phone being two going on three years old, the, the battery on it is doing absolutely fine. Um, like I haven't noticed any meaningful drop off on it because I've always slow charged this. You know, it, it very the only time I actually ever supercharge it is when I actually need it. Like if I'm going to walk out the door in ten minutes and I'm at 10% and I'm like, my phone is going to die if I don't charge it. So I'll just quickly supercharge it for like 10 or 15 minutes just to just jam another 30% into it. Mm. But that only gets done once in a blue moon. Yeah. I think saying on that, the thing I thought I'd completely cooked the battery in my Pixel Mm. the other day, because it just seemed to, to be dying, like basically instantly. Yeah. No, apparently somehow I just bugged the things so the screen never turned off. Oh. Well, that'll do it. So it was like, I looked I looked back at the battery stats and I was like, Come on. what do you mean it's only lasting four hours between charges? It's clearly completely stuffed. Oh, that was four hours of solid screen on time. Yeah. Why was the phone screen on solidly for four hours? Phone? Are you okay there? <laughs> so yeah, but somehow it just got stuck in that position where Mm. the screen just never turned off yeah i wonder if there was just an app that was just running to keep awake yeah or something and it's just like what and yeah and so i i disabled that left Mm. it just sat on my desk for like four hours and it dropped by zero percent oh yeah okay no it's fine there we go fixed but Yeah. yeah i thought i'd completely hosed it and i was just like oh that's a shame because i actually really quite like the phone yes uh, people with 45 and 50 watt chargers for your phones yeah don't I run wish, them that I high every day I wish that was more common well I mean but I wish great, also but they the charging but I also wish the charging was more intelligent yeah I... so it's a ch- case of it goes ah the phone is at like 7% or something maximum charging speed okay it's hit 50% you're down to 10 watts now yeah kind of thing I wish that was kind of the default position just because the only times I need it to super fast charge is when I'm at like 10% or something and I'm like Mm. oh heck I need to go out and I miscalculated my charging kind Mm. of thing and stuff like that so it's like that's when I need the super fast charging yeah but it's also a case of nothing is actually fast enough kind of thing so yeah yeah so, yeah. Apparently, the only d- real danger is when you're fast charging past eighty percent. Yeah, and yeah. also like I never charge past eighty percent anymore. Yeah. Though, so yeah. Cam says uh, my phone is fine after two years of eighteen watt quick charging. So yeah. Yeah, I guess your mileage may vary. Is eighteen be watts? The case eighteen always. watts isn't also particularly fast yeah, charging. Yeah, I was gonna say like I think so that's good. Yeah, I I think that is fairly modest. What is that in C's? For the, 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 the maths. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm guessing that's um, nine volt two amps. Yeah, which is going to be around one C for the yeah. cells, so it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, Xiaomi made a hundred watt charger. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, there. The way they do it is um, by splitting the battery. By making an actual battery, by because they have multiple cells, yeah, as opposed to every other phone is it actually a single cell? It doesn't have a battery. Yeah, to be technical. Yes. Um. Yes. So they actually have batteries as opposed to just a single cell. Um. So each cell is effectively only charging at like twenty five watts. Yeah. Which. I'm. I'm. Su- I guess. I'm but surprised it's time. not more common. I mean, I guess it. Compl- I guess it massively complex complexifies. Makes more complicated. Yeah. I'm, I guess it massively makes more complicated the battery and charging system of the phone compared to a single cell setup yeah. because suddenly you need a battery management system. However, I'm surprised that two cell um, phones are not more common or at least in, in tablets where again, you know, uh, no, a lot of tablets run two cell actually. That's a lie. They just don't run them as two cells. Oh, as well yeah. As I can tell. It's two, yeah. Yeah, that's true. As in they don't run them as two separately chargeable cells. Yeah, it's a one by two. Yeah. 
yeah, it's a three point it's a three point seven volt battery. Yeah, um, yeah, and also uh, yeah, PC Vault, um, a desktop with an internal battery. That's called a UPS. The um, problem with that is a desktop can use six or seven hundred watts. Yeah, they're not designed to be power efficient. And seven hundred watts in batteries is an awful lot of batteries. Yeah, it, you can't make anything that's actually useful because, um, like, a laptop, even super high power laptops are one hundred twenty five watts. Yeah, yeah. You know, maybe two hundred ones. Yeah, if they're the silly, crazy top end ones. So yeah. Yeah, and like decent. M- uh, decent high-end ultrabooks with high performance. You're looking at like maybe a two-hour battery runtime. Um, sorry, say that again. Ultrabooks. Uh, sorry, decent uh, high, perf- uh, high. Oh, performance high performance game- laptops. Yeah, yeah. you're yeah, looking like, at like maybe yeah. two hours. Yeah, yeah. I'm not necessarily talking about the big chunkers, but something where it's actually thin and designed to be a laptop and not a mobile workstation. Yeah, because so then you're are- getting about twenty minutes. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. They'll, they'll give about two hours, and that's for a device, and that's for something that is using a fraction of the power. But then on the other, and, and yeah, so yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, more efficient than UPS at least, because DC DC conversions. Yes, true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, 12 volt 1.5. Oh, that's unusual. Yeah, 12 volt 1.5 amps for 18 watts. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't seen 12. 12 volt charging is quite uncommon, as far as I know. But then on the on the flip side, I'm not a phone expert, so there might be some Isn't phone that... experts that are just like, no, there's loads that do that. Was that a, is that a PD standard? I can't remember if that's a power. Power delivery PC. can do 12 volts. Yeah, I can't remember I've if 12 1.5 is the, yeah. is the standard power delivery one. I, I've only and ever then... seen power delivery do nine or 15. It can do 12. I've just never seen it oh, go really? to 12. Okay, because I know that um, Quick Charge Three does a, a nine volt. At one point seven one or something, it's like okay, yeah. that doesn't round out nicely. Yeah, but yeah, but yeah. It also depends on the um, where where in kind of the charge you are quick charging the battery. Yeah, and of course, just whether the phone is smart enough to um, uh, manage the battery nicely or not. Yes, yeah. you know some some phones will. It sounds. It sounds like with modern phones, there are plenty of phones out there that do have some intelligence to how quickly they charge and when they start dropping off the current and things like that. Yeah, absolutely. Whereas there are some phones that are a bit more earlier and just like, way, full charge, you know. Yeah, and absolutely. And we'll just two amps up to 99%. Yeah, it's like, um, but it's also like the same thing with electric cars. Um, they'll only charge, cause, you know, the, the the manufacturer will obviously advertise and say, oh yeah, up to two hundred kilowatt charging. Yeah. We'll only do the two hundred kilowatt charging at below like thirty five percent capacity. Yeah. And things like that. So it's a case of yeah, but then charging it, at two hundred kilowatts at like ten percent capacity is doing nothing to the battery's health. Yeah. Whereas trying to charge at that speed at like eighty five percent capacity. That's, is going to do yeah, something to its health kind of thing. So yeah, when the when the battery is at low charge, it's also at a much lower resistance level. So whereas the the battery's resistance increases as it charges up, which is why once you get to a higher percentage of charge, higher state of charge, because the resistance is higher, you keep trying to stuff in that many amps. You're drastically increasing the heat inside the cell. And that is what is cooking them. You literally start cooking the cell. But when the battery is very low, down at the single digit percentages, because the resistance is so low, um, it, that you're not producing any heat by stuffing in a huge amount of power. So you don't damage it by, uh, by giving it the beans. Mm. <laughs> beans! So yeah. But then I guess, yeah, you know, 200... <laughs> beans? Um... <laughs> But um, hands up in the chat, anyone who got that reference. Um, anyway, um, yeah. But uh, yeah, with, with cars though, I guess if you can do two hundred kilowatts up to thirty percent, if that puts if that puts thirty miles in the tank, then job complete, isn't it? Because how often you know that's going to get you that gets you to the shops and back, which is yeah. what you needed, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I don't <clears throat> I don't know how the percentage equates sort of thing for the mileage yeah. i know that someone did 
instead of obviously x x time to do x percent um it was just a case of time to do 100 miles of range yeah um and it's like tesla eight minutes or something like that it's like okay i can do 100 miles in eight minutes yeah fine yeah that's that's standy isn't it yeah which roughly equates to i can do 200 miles in 20 minutes yeah so it's like that's pretty crazy. Like I'm happy with that. Yeah, like the one uh, if like if that is I'm going I'm going to take that at face value um without, you know, without oh, that, that's third party reviews, not Tesla's numbers. Okay, sure. Okay. Well, anyway, I'm still going to take that at so, face value. Yeah. Um just because, you know, uh like I'm not going to ask questions about what circumstances that is in and stuff like that. Yeah, However, absolute yeah. fastest possible yeah. charging. At at face value, a lot of the time when people are talking about, um, uh, you know, electric cars and stuff, they're going, oh, yeah, but you can't just fill up at a station. It's like, I don't know. When I go to fill up with petrol, I could easily, you know, you're easily going to be stopped in the petrol station for five to ten minutes. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if you go and pay at the kiosk because you want to get a coffee or a sandwich as well. So suddenly, you know, 200 mi- you know, 100 miles in eight minutes you've actually you're now comparable to how fast you fill up a petrol car i mean obviously a petrol car you could fill up with 300 miles of range in that time however again uh, that you know how often are you doing more than 100 miles in a day in a a single yeah yeah yeah, in a single sitting at that point we've potentially got electric cars that fill up in the same time as a petrol car which is the other thing is of course the fact that you can fill it out you can fill up that electric car anywhere where there is electricity. Yeah. You do not have to do it at a at a specific establishment. Oh. Oh, it's crap. Oh, it's crashed. It does this sometimes. Uh-oh. Reboot. Yeah, turn it off but and yeah, on again. But it's kind of the case I hate of it like... when my soldering iron crashes, man. <laughs> <laughs> but it's kind of a case of it's like, you know, even with that, like with the you know the parking you've just about got behind your shop. Yeah. You could run a fifty meter extension cable out to that. Yeah. Plug your car in, and the time you're here. Yeah. It's a case that the time you're at work every day, it could just sit on a charger. Yeah. Kind of thing, or it's like you know, so kind of like that, or it's like you know the charges there in you know Asda and Tesla car parks is a case of when you're doing your weekly shop, you can chuck in like. 150 miles which is more than most people commute in a week yeah and that that could potentially be your main charge as well because like one of the issues at the moment is at home at at my flat where i live you know my car is only 20 my my car is only 15 to 20 meters away from my back door however that's across a car park so i can't actually run a i couldn't run a charge cable out there oh you could we we would have to electrify the car park by running a cable all the way around the outside edge of it which requires an actual installation. I can't just string a, a cable out the out the window, kind of thing. Um, n- not not on a permanent basis, but you could yeah. get like a fifty meter extension and just kind of go. Uh, yeah, I guess. Yeah. In a kind of dirty fashion. Yeah, and I'd have to tell my neighbours, "Hey, please don't trip over my heckin' car charge cable." You know. Um, yeah, but you'd only need to you'd need to do that so infrequently. Yeah, that's right. But then also, again, you know, with with car chargers appearing at supermarkets and stuff like that. I could just be like, yeah, I don't have a car charger at home. I literally, I pop out to the supermarket and in the in the 15 to 20 minutes it took me to pick up some shopping. To do the weekly shop that I needed to do anyway. Yeah, yeah. I have recharged my car for the week. Yeah. I mean, now obviously that's not, and I you need another situation because you're like, I don't want to rely on the supermarket to be able to drive my car. No, absolutely. But as a con, you know, but you know, as a dirty oh, yeah. concept, it's just like, huh. That's that's amazing that that's actually possible, you know. Yeah, so, yeah. absolutely. So yeah, so we, you know you've got that as an option. There's obviously also the fact of basically every motorway service station in the UK has fast chargers for both the Tesla branded ones, yeah, and also the non-Tesla branded ones. And there are Everyone loads else. of stalls, yeah. So it's very easy, yeah, from that perspective as well. Um, and if you happen to live near to one of those, you could also reasonably easily do that. Yeah, absolutely. Just thinking like the one at Warminster. I mean, um, is it the, the like the service uh, station there? I don't to... know. I'm very, very rarely out that direction. Mm. Um, but yeah, I can certainly like, think of a couple. Yeah, there's there 
um, there's there, there, and it's literally just mm. like on a roundabout with normal roads going to it, as opposed to it being yeah. like a motorway. So you can literally pop in and pop out. So whilst it's a case of obviously it's an it's a pain to have to do that, but it's a case of it if, could be done if suddenly every yeah. other situation has completely gone wrong. Yeah, you if, could just do that if they banned gas cars tomorrow and said we and, and they just binned everyone's petrol cars and replaced them all with electric cars. Yeah. You would survive. Yeah, exactly. You, yeah. Know, you could do something like that. And it's also the case of um, an awful lot of places mm. are um, allowing you to three-pin plug into um, lampposts. Because an awful lot of ah. lampposts just have a three-pin plug in. Oh, rad. And they're just letting you plug into that. That's very generous of them, yeah. And st stuff like that. Yeah. So it's a case of whilst, yes, that's slow charging at three kilowatts. I'm guessing that's free, though, as well. It's a case that, uh, yeah, it's yeah. a case that with that, um, kind of a case that you know an hour on there still gives you probably 100 miles yeah yeah that's fair so it's like 100 miles is more than enough to get you to your next destination hmm. and also a case of 100 miles allows you to drive certainly in the uk most of the length of the country to get to a supercharger yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it's kind of a case of yeah. Well, that's the thing. You know, driving to specific locations to refuel or to or re-energize is not totally bonkers because, like, I used to, you know, it's inconvenient. I, yeah, but it's more than to... doable. I I used to, um, you know, one of my old cars had an LPG conversion on it, so I had to go to um. So when I wanted to refill the um LPG, I had to go to specific petrol stations that had LPG. Um, and there was a specific one that I went to that was in the wrong direction for anywhere that I normally went, only by a couple a mile or two. But it was really no big deal for me to just drive out there once every week or two to fill up my LPG tank, you know. So yeah, yeah, and I was fine with that. Yeah, and it's a case that it's also the fact that I feel like a lot of people dramatically overestimate how far they think they drive. Mm. That or more well. precisely, yeah. how much range they think they need. Yeah. Because it's like, I I ran the numbers for a couple of people who are like, oh, I could never buy this car, it's only got a 190 mile range. Yeah. I could never drive from here to the Netherlands with that. <laughs> I was like, have you ever done that? And they're like, no, but I couldn't do it in my car. And I was like, right, so you could never do a task in your car that you've never required of your car. Yeah. Why does that matter to your buying habits? If you needed to do that one day... You could just hire a longer range car yeah. for the length of your trip. People just keep wanting to plan for eventualities that, that they will never, ever actually encounter. It's kind of similar to that. I'm going to catch up on chat in a minute, by the way, because there's some good questions in chat that I want to cover, um, starting from PC Bolt. Um, but yeah, um, it's, it's kind of like when buying laptops is people often say sort of, oh, I'm going to keep buying a 15 inch laptop with a dedicated GPU in case I want to play games on it. And then never, ever, ever play games on their laptop. That was yeah. me for years. I kept buying the 15-inch MacBook Pro. So I'm like, oh, but I might want to play games on it. And eventually when I switched down to a 13-inch, you know, so my mate was just like, oh, but what if you want to play games on it? I'm like, but I don't. Yeah. I've always had a 15-inch and I never, ever use it for games. So I'm going to stop paying extra for additional bulk and a GPU that's going to fail and just buy a 13-inch. You know, yeah. same with cars. People go sort of, oh, I'm going to get it. Just for, I, I, I will get it for this spec just in case I need it. And it's like, yeah, but you won't. Yeah. You know, and in a way, practicality is a tricky one because pra practicality is a case of when you need it, you need it. Like my car is incredibly impractical in its boot size and stuff like that. But it's a case of it's never a problem because I never need it. Now, once every six months, I want to carry something bulky that doesn't fit into my boot. And I'm just like, if I had a hatchback, it would have gone in. Yeah. But there's once every six months. And you know what I do? I find another way. I also you know, feel like the comment is hatchbacks are just better cars anyway. True. That This is a bit of a poor that's example. A, that's a poor example yeah. because hatchbacks are just better. Yes, I agree with that. <laughs> and also the fact that I like estates and I would quite happily... You but... Know, yeah. But, However, yeah, yes. The, the the point still stands is that yeah. I have an inconvenience on my car that every now and then is an inconvenience, but never to the point where I can't deal with it. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Um, so, yeah. Right, I'm going to quickly roll back up the chat and just catch some questions that we've been having. Um, uh, let me see. So, um, 
Uh, where was it? So PC Bot asked, uh, have you ever tried replacing dead cells in laptop batteries? How's that actually worked out? I actually gave that a go recently because it's something that I wanted to dabble in. Um, and my, my instance of it was a bit of a dead end um, because the problem is if the cells in the battery have gone bad, nine to, a lot of the time the battery management system, the BMS, the controller for that will have gone into a locked state. So even if you replace the cells, the controller will still say, nope, this battery is dead and refuse to do anything. Now, in some cases, you can unlock the controller again if you have the device to do that. Um, case in point would be ugh, my, um, my laptop battery analyzer. I've got a video on this guy, the professional laptop battery analyzer, the NLBA. This can do that on some batteries and they're expanding the, the range of batteries that this can work on all the time. Um, so ugh, you would be able to unlock the controller again, put new cells in the battery and stick it back in a laptop. But the problem is, in my opinion, in the vast majority of cases, I don't think that's actually worth doing at that point. I think you may as well just buy a new battery. Um, if the battery has not gone into a locked state, though, absolutely you can do that. And there's no reason why it won't work. Um, so it kind of depends. It, there's definitely mileage in it. There's probably there's going to be people who who do this more often than I do, who may be able to answer that question better. But it's an interesting topic. I don't think it's worth doing in the majority of cases. But there's going to be some people who have found some niche uses where it's a rare battery that's hard to find or something like that, or just simply um, for like common batteries like uh, MacBook batteries. Um, they may have got to a point where they can just take dead MacBook batteries, put new cells in them, reset the management controller, and they've effectively refurbished a battery at half the cost of a new one, say. Or possibly a case of, because they see a volume of MacBooks, they can take all of the batteries and from them bin the dead cells, and they have enough good cells to make up yeah. quote-unquote refurbed batteries. Yeah, that would work as well. So obviously, if you're at that volume of devices, then it's a case that yeah, yeah, you know that that's also another thing, kind of taking the parts from what you have and making working batteries out of them and un and resetting yeah controllers and stuff. You know, that, you that's get that's a good way a volume, to do it. A sufficient volume through, but obviously you need a, a sufficient volume of a single model. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's absolutely true. And again, that's where you know, again, specialising in say Max is often a good a good case for that. Yeah. because you'll often find plenty of common parts. So yeah, because like the MacBook Air battery has barely changed in years apart from the brand new one. So yeah. So um, kind of situations like that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, Martin Barker said, how far south are you? Because uh, they, as in superchargers, are not all, all surface stations here in the north of the country. We're in the south, the glorious south, below the M3 um, and the A303. And so they're the, everywhere the, down here. The, 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 the north south of well do you uh, mean the m4 see i was going for the super joke and say nope the north south divide is the a303 <laughs> however no the m4 is the north south divide as i see it uh so yeah below the m4 we'll say that the um, midlands are a lie yeah the midlands don't exist there is only there is only above the m4 and below the m4 um and there's a couple of edge cases like oxford um <laughs> So, <laughs> Oxford is technically the South. Yes, <laughs> we're claiming it. Uh, let's see. Then also, Christopher David asked, uh, "What should we sold these LEDs?" So yeah, what I'm do what I've been doing here is I sold a one pin on each LED, and then I reflow it to push the LED in place. Which is how, as you can see, all these LEDs are perfectly straight and flat, more or less. Um, and then we solder all the other legs once they're dead flat and in place. Uh, so yes. Which, uh, um, yeah, so there's that. Uh, no right to repair, no electric vehicles. Yeah, I don't, I don't have enough knowledge to give any kind of insightful comment. However, that's certainly something we've got to keep an eye on. I agree with that. Um, so, yeah, let's see. Although, interesting to see the right to repair. Uh, was it a presidential order? 
or something like that. that I saw something had happened, but I haven't read up what interesting, happened. Just an interesting thing on that, because it seems to have basically mandated that the FCC get involved with John Deere tractors. Yes. Which is an interesting response. Yeah. It, um, so it looks like the government have actually stepped in enough to say, we don't know what the hell is going on here, but you guys need to do something about it. Yeah, so it's an interesting yeah. start, certainly on that point. Yeah. There, there, there is now a... Yeah. There, there is... The government have said, something needs to happen. We don't know what, but you need to do something. Yeah, basically, so... Ah, it create the regulation to force right to repair. Yeah, yeah. So of course, I think it was we don't know specifically what related to, or at least the 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 news article I saw said it only related to John Deere tractors. Yeah. However, I'm imagining that that was just the article specifically stating that, mm. um, as opposed to that actually being what the bill is, and it's a case of it's possibly being wider than that. Yeah. All right, so pause, flashes, and we unpause. I, I have to... I, this is more like an enable and disable button because when it's in, the clock is enabled, and when it's out, the clock is paused or disabled. So this is more like an enable button. So, yeah, enable, start. There we go, off it goes. Me. Who's counting the reliability of this? I don't know. Um, so, yes... This was a really good kit, actually. If you want to do one of these little soldering kits, this is a really good one. I think that's why I originally picked it up, because it's got lots of components to put on the board, and it's got a really good variety of components to put on the board. We've got a couple of chips, some resistors, some buttons, some capacitors, some um, transistors, and a whole bunch of LEDs. So if you want to get started soldering, this is definitely a really good kit to work on. I also had, just in case I sped through this one, I've got the heart kits. That I did on my pine saw review. I've still got heckin' twenty of these things. Um, uh, so uh, so yeah, but this one was really good because that's got a really good selection on it. Seems a little bit slow. Yeah, probably. I'm almost tempted to hook it up to the bench power supply and see if we can make it do weird things with weird voltages. I definitely wouldn't rely on this for accuracy. That kind of went it, a bit wonky there, did it? So it went, Aah! It started entering another dimension and then it returned. Is. It looked like I'd thrown it out of, off screen. It had gone, boo, 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 boo. Or actually, that would have been a blue shift, so it would have gone, boo, boo, boo. You know? Oh, dear. Anyway, I feel it's, I feel it's timed. Mm. We are at the three hour marker. Um, I do want to, um, I do want to mess around with this more, but yeah. Let's do group build on the heart kit. I really want to do the group build. However, I lack the time and energy to actually plan it. I'm almost tempted to say I need help coordinating that. Um, but I don't know what I'm inferring if I were to say that. <laughs> like, so yeah. Would you give one of the heart LED things away? Um, I sh the problem is it's probably cheaper to go and buy one yourself. It will be cheaper for you to buy one on AliExpress than it will be for me to send it to you. Um, so yeah, you've pinged me a bit like five times about it. Well, do you want to organize it, Teltac? And I'm not even joking. <laughs> like, literally, do everything for me and I will PR it for you. <laughs> <laughs> This is because this is the problem is that I've done I've done I, I've done event management before like I did event man I, I, I plan I was upper management on a convention and we would have people say oh hey we'll do the cosplay contest for you and I'm like okay and I would say to them right you guys are in charge of the cosplay contest I need you guys to do literally everything and then on the day they'd be like sort of Oh yeah, no, we don't have this. We don't know what we do. You know, they they didn't have anything planned, and I'm like, you guys said you were doing this, and they were like, we never got any help with it, and I'm like, you said I told you, I said you guys are doing literally everything. Do you understand? And you said yes, and they were like, we haven't done that. So this is the problem. I had this is why I have trust issues with help, because you say to someone, I, I need you to do literally everything, and they go, okay. And then you come back and you go, right, have you done it? And they're like, no. So, yeah, it's the problem. Like, if, if I don't do it myself, it won't get done. So, yeah. 
Uh, good job with the delegation, darling. Thanks, Kimbo. Oh, uh, yes. Oh, well. I thought Kimbo was the delegation. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm delegating things to Kimbo. Kimbo is doing things in the shop, and she's doing a good job. So, yeah. Hi, Kimbo, by the way. And Michael Casper with the $4.99. That's a very specific value. Thank you very much for the $4.99. Great show today. Thank you very much. On that bombshell, it is time to go because um, if I start dicking around with this, we'll be here for another half an hour minimum. And uh, yeah, we're at three hours, so we're going to go. Um, however, I'm glad you guys have enjoyed this. Um, we'll be back with more stuff. Also, earlier on, someone did ask about the keyboard. The keyboard will make a return. We've got the, we've got the USB ports. So there's the USB ports for the keyboard. So the keyboard will make a comeback. We will be doing that. It will um, live! Yes, indeed. So uh, it's not the last we've seen the keyboard. I did have this. I just didn't want to do the keyboard today. I wanted to do something simple that had instructions written on the circuit board, basically. So yeah. Um, so yes. Will you organize collective soldering live streams from kits from AliExpress? I want to do that. Um, we will get Eventually, it done. Yeah, we'll, we'll get it done. Even if I, even if I just strong arm Teltac into planning it for me. Um, we'll get someone to do it. Anyway. Um, yeah, that's it. Thanks for watching, everyone. We'll see you next week with something else. Um, I've enjoyed this conversation in English. That's it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm going to hit stop streaming now. Bye! See you next week. Goodbye. See ya.